What's going on, peoples? Yes, today is that day. What day is it? It's the day of death. Uh, so 31 years ago, this show happened. Uh, let me pull this off. I got a couple guests on here. I'm going to bring them on screen. These guys are maniacs. They played the day of death. Um, one made some of the most epic intros ever to the songs. And um, here he is, King Fowley, and our other guest, Alex Books from Immolation. But he was playing in Gorephobia at the time. How's it going, fellas? Hey, how are you, buddy? Good to see you, Roy. I'm still cool, waiting to bro. see Alex. He's, Alex is still spinning. <laughs> there he is. Hey, Alex, how are you, brother? We don't have any sound from you, Alex. How you living, brother? You could pop <laughs> off and pop back on again if you want. How's it going, King? I'm good, brother. Good to see you, man. Cool. Yeah, man. that was you a fucking blast, good. man. 31 years ago today, huh? Wow. <laughs> Hold on, Alex. I see your mic is turned off. No, you, you're muting your own mic. You got sound, Alex? No? Pop off and then pop back on, bro, bro. So what's up, man? How's how's it going? I uh I was going through the archive of the uh I was going back in history today and I was listening to um some of the stuff you were saying in between the songs and you I remember this day, okay? I remember the day of death pretty well. Right. And uh, I remember that you were getting everybody fucking pumped up, dude. All right, you Alex, hear I can hear you now. Yeah, I hear you. What's up, Alex? <laughs> ah, not too much. Hey, it's Alex, same... brother. What's up, King? How you doing, buddy? Cheers, buddy. Good to see you, man. Yeah, same here, man. I was saying, Alex, uh, I uh, what do you call it? I think uh, King was really pumping up the friggin' day of death that day, you know? He was, he was always pumping up every show back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> I was stuck in that fucking crazed world. I am still am. Some, somehow, I still am. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, man, that was fucking wild. Uh, you know, I remember starting that day off before we even got in the goddamn place cooking fucking outside with um with repulsion in their fucking camper, man. Fucking they were I think they were doing fish fry and listening to fucking bluegrass. We were out there oh, fucking rallying us up before it even started, man. In Dave Graves <laughs> camper, that thing? That was the thing. That was definitely <laughs> it. We're jamming awesome, that buddy. soundtrack to Hee Haw. <laughs> <laughs> very brutal, very brutal. Yeah, yeah so I figured this would also be cool because um, there is going to be an event coming in New York City um, about Brian Pattison, like a kind of like a benefit show, kind of like a, I don't know if it's a benefit, but it's some kind of like a, you know uh, they're doing a show. I, are you guys playing that? Uh, we are. We You're are playing, playing that, that thing. Yeah, it's basically it's a benefit for one of his uh, for a cancer foundation and just you know just a, a in memory kind of thing. To celebrate his life, Brian, you know, he was fucking great guy, as you know. He helped put this show on. He's the one that got us on the show. I found this out this afternoon, Roy, when you and me were asking about who who got us. I talked to Mark from Deceased, and he said it was Josh from Suffocation got in touch with us as Brian Pattison wanted us to play there. And then they touched base, and that's what got us to the day of death that day. Cool. Awesome. Yeah, I also spoke to um, uh, this guy, Joe, who was involved with uh, setting it up, too. He was going to try to get on, but uh, he had to work double shifts because of the whole, you know, work crisis going on in the world out there. So what's up to everybody right, in the right. chat? Um, today, you're going to see some bad quality videos. You're going to hear some horrible quality audio. But at the same time, you're going to relive old school death metal the way it's meant to be. Raw. So basically, um, yeah. And uh, the day of death was uh, a fest like no other, basically. It was a one-day fest. It wasn't an all-weekend fest. There was an X amount of bands. All the bands were amazing. Um Everybody was kind of breaking out. I mean, at the time, I think I want to say that Autopsy was the only band that even had a record out at the time. I could be wrong about that fact, but uh, maybe Cannibal Corpse had a record. I don't, don't think so, though. No. 
Repulsive. Yeah, all to- autopsy didn't have a record party. out because Severed Severed Survival was coming because he ended up using a picture with me and him at the day of death in the collage for Severed Survival. So a little mm. bit later. Oh, I remember Retribution from the Dead was coming, if I'm not mistaken, because they had uh they played like uh I'll be playing some stuff later too. I got some I got I got some shit up my sleeve. I was I was digging into the Roy archive of cool. tapes. There was actually I was trying to find uh one specific the record was recorded though then by that at that point, I think. It just wasn't out yet, right? Right, King? I think you guys had that album recorded already, the first record. Yeah, it was already recorded. We yeah, we didn't have it out yet. It was delayed like over a year, Luck of the Corpse was back then. We may have um we didn't you know we didn't even have we didn't even have the gut wrench seven inch out yet because we went back to the sky room and played again as a three piece when Doug had I was leaving the band. We actually recorded that that second time. I don't know if you went up for that, Roy. Very few people went, but they actually did a second show at the sky room um about a year later. And um it was a big snowstorm. I don't know if you Alex, I don't know if you were there, but it was like suffocation, oh, I, abominable I played, played, deceased played. Yeah. Yeah, I played. And you, you uh, remember that you thing? Got- I, I can't remember all the bands at that one. That was the one yeah, where that was the one where me and uh, Vinny, me and that guy yeah, Vinny went and stole a bunch of uh, food for everybody because yes. we were stuck. We were stuck in the snow into that fucking yes. place. Yes. I think we. Pl- I think it was all of the bands and yeah, maybe yeah, like yeah. thirty people tops at that thing. Massive right. snowstorm. Yeah, yeah. It was bugged out because um, there was a se- there was a couple series of shows before the day of death. And then there, after the day of death, even like three weeks later, we were back up there again. And I remember I was up there with Mortician, Incantation, uh, Immortal Fate, uh, Immortal Terror played, which were the locals, and um, Mahamasis, Mahamasis, I believe. And then, yeah, like every couple weeks, there was like another show. It was like, you know, you had you guys coming up. You had uh, just like, just here's a good example. Like here was one of them. I saw this. That's the show with with that's, the. Uh, that's the show. There's hardly anybody there. December sixteenth. That's so the it was show. Yeah. And King got his food. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy started. show. And that this was where you were. Beyond uh, death, beyond death was what Jack Owen. Pants. Is yeah, this yeah, where well, you were? It was. Um, we <laughs> actually we actually went and bought a fucking thing of bread and we stole like tuna fish and lunch meat and mayonnaise and mustard and you know all this bullshit because we were all stuck in that fucking place. Yeah, but yeah, I remember that's where that's where Jack Owens, who went on to be in Cannibal Corpse, he, he was in Beyond Death. I remember yeah. that getting that tape from him that day. Yeah, he, mm-hmm. Alex is right. It was like there was basically nobody there. I mean, yeah. the whole thing was fucked up. We almost got killed going there. We drove yeah. some like so, we drove some side mountain to get there, and we were stuck on this fucking mountain. And some dude asked us for 150 bucks. We were hanging off the fucking side of the mountain. There was no railing, nothing. And I remember this, it was a ski lift on this fucking thing. And it said, you are one mile high in the air or some shit. We were all fucking freaking out. It was like three in the morning. We were in a cargo van. I was driving it. And that damn thing just slid right off the road. And it was hanging like one third off the side, like, like the fucking Wally Coyote Roadrunner fucking cartoons. And uh, yeah. they were all fucking drunk. And I was like, don't shake this van. We're going to go off the side. So we all dibbied on out to the right side of the of the car of the van door and we were standing there on fucking ice man we were fucked man we were like i don't know what we're gonna do i don't know what we're gonna do and then this guy shows up and he's like man y'all are fucked man and i was like yeah you got you got a hitch can you tow us down and he's like yeah fuck yeah for 150 dollars and we were like 150 dollars he's like all right see you later we we're like nah 150 dollars is cool so we made it down the fucking hill and we made it to the fucking show. And, you know, it, it's still a great memory, though. I mean, it, it got out of hand crazy. We met some crazy people in Buffalo that time. And we had a hell of a fucking good time. I mean, we always do. We don't give a fuck. We just want to fucking have fun, man. Yeah. Were you guys the ones that went up in the back of the camper? And then the, everybody was in the back of the like a U-Haul? Or was that you, Alex? Uh, no, we were in... It wasn't Jim, us. Jim Rosa, his... Uh, I don't know. It was like some old... Car suburban? Had, no, it wasn't a suburban. It was like a station wagon. Okay. And oh we, yeah, yeah. I remember that thing. <laughs> yeah. We, we awesome. had two uh, two flat tires on the way up there, and then uh, we got stranded. Didn't look like we were going to make it. And Jim Rowe hitchhiked to the nearest town to get a uh, tire. He didn't come back, and that's a whole other story. We we encountered uh, a, an accident on the on the road where there was a guy with his foot hanging off. And uh, our our roadie, I, we didn't know it at the time, but he was on um, PCP, and he was sticking his finger in the guy's leg, hanging off, asking if he was okay and if he felt that. 
it was uh, well, that's a whole other story. <laughs> you know, that, that up, uh, and then even I, I can tell you, it's, it includes uh, King and the whole deceased crew. Was uh, I remember after autopsy played, we all went back to the hotel, and I just remember like the whole deceased entourage just like raising hell in the uh, in the hotel. There was yeah, like we a lot of people the day of death. Yeah, it was just total insanity. Great time. You know, really? Yeah, I King, remember. King was raising hell. No way, dude. <laughs> <laughs> always some other guy. Oh yeah, about. it's always yeah, fun. So it was an interesting. Yeah, I don't remember any like dead bodies on the way up or any kind of like snowstorms, but I do remember. It wasn't a dead uh, body, but he was. It was an accident that just happened. You know. Yeah. Hey, the, do you feel this? I'm sticking my finger into your yeah. uh, part of yeah. your leg right here. Yeah. And then I realized, oh well, he's on he's on PCP right now, or acid, or whatever the hell he was on. So, <laughs> yeah, that's a whole new story. Interesting. So, yeah. So that's was, more like my bandmates. Really, it was yeah. like a real day of death in a way. So when you got yeah. there, it was a complete day of death. Yeah. Yeah, it was a bugged out. I it remember. It was so classic, uh, though. I mean, it was so many people. So many pen pals yeah. from the United States, even outside of the country, oh. all sitting there. And it's like, wow, here's everybody in one room. Yeah. That was the first. That was really the, the that, that Michigan Death Fest were the first ones, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. First time For me, you, this was the first. Yeah. I mean, yeah. even yeah. like uh, Autopsy, I, you know, I was pen pals with Chris and, and Eric since, I guess, like, I don't know, early 88 or whatever. But we used to always talk on the phone. And uh, so that was the first time I got to meet them in person. You know, so that was pretty cool. And um, yeah, no, that was, uh, you know, and first time <clears throat> um, I think in an event like that with all, you know, the extreme bands at the time, because, uh, you know, back that was kind of the end for me, at least is 1990 was kind of like the end of uh, something special, you know, because it, 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 the bands at the time, everybody was kind of doing their own thing and it wasn't all these copycats like you have today. And, and um, yeah, it was pretty special, you know? Yeah, it was. You're right about that, man. It, ch it changed a lot. And that's just that whole, that, that whole day. You're right. Like everybody was on the rise, Roy, like you were saying, everybody was just kind of coming up and had their own little thing. You know, everybody had yeah. their own just little personality that made them them. And as a fan too, because I wasn't I wasn't playing in a band, I remember just seeing like a bunch of bands that I had never heard before. You know, I remember it was the first time I saw like Baphomet, and it was the first time I think I heard um who else? There was a couple bands, you know, like I might have heard Suffocation and a couple of the bands, but you know mortician immolation but there was like you know i think it was the first time i ever really heard cannibal corpse just to be honest you know and i was I was pretty impressed with them man and they got a really good reaction obviously it was their hometown you know yeah and it was uh they, yeah i think yeah, everybody they, was, was there for autopsy yeah yeah sick so yeah i mean there was obviously um what do you call it? There's there's this this whole show and this whole era too is documented in kind of like a book with where uh, Brian Patterson and um, Alan Moses was uh, involved together, which right. is uh, glorious times. So I'm going to show that. So this was the book. Let's see here. I don't know why it's not showing. There we go. And this this kind of like encapsulated like all of the gig in a way you know like i know it had some other bands in it but i mean there was like complete um really nice photos you know the kind of a storytelling of that that little piece of time and that little era and i'm sure for buffalo it, it was so bugged out because like we did have our we had our g willikers you know i'm not sure what you had king but like G yeah, ours willikers was wasn't safari club ours was the safari, safari club and the barbecue iguana <laughs> yeah, so we had our G Willikers, and they up in Buffalo. I, apparently, the Sky Room was a thing, man, because I saw like all these shows that came before Day of Death, like a Morbid Angel show. There was a, another Mortician show there with Sacrifice uh, from Canada. There was like Sepultura. There was like quite a bit of things going on. And even for the next couple of years, I noticed Buffalo's scene was kind of popping, dude, because not only did we all go back up there, 
we went up there again and again, or our friends' bands were going up there. You know what I mean? So it was a cool, cool thing, man. It was nice to uh, connect with other uh, like-minded metalheads. Yeah, and like literally, like there was something going on there that was just electric, dude. It was just like amazing. You know, I, I just, I don't, I don't ever, I don't know. Like I've never been to a metal festival that gave me that like feeling ever again which is weird you know considering you've had all yeah. these metal festivals over the years that was you know obviously michigan like you said being a very early one milwaukee metal fest you know what i mean but this this one for some reason was like more like an under super underground ish one you know what i mean mm -hmm. and yeah for some reason it just brought like droves and droves of maniacs out so it was so cool you know shut that off um it, really was. it was just so bugged out dude i mean i just i think about it all the time what's up gino i think about it all the time um you know just i think about the entire day and the people and just the maniacs that were there you know and so uh getting on to this a little bit too i you know even though i opened up with the incantation with will singing uh, you had John McEntee playing guitar, Ronnie and uh, Jim Rowe playing. At that time, um, what do you call it? They were at the tail end of the Gorephobia set. So they weren't even really supposed to play. They weren't on the flyer. Yeah, they weren't. They weren't. They weren't. Yeah, they were trying to get on the show, but uh, they couldn't. So last minute, uh, our ride backed out on us to, to uh, go to... Uh, you know, play the fest and uh, McEntee called me and it was just like, Hey, you know, you think you can sneak a song or two of us on there? We can get Jimmy to drive you. And I was like, sure. Why not? You know? So, uh, yeah. I don't know. what do they play? Like two songs or something? They played like three songs in a row and they just like, would just, you know, let the feedback ride and just play the next song basically. So they were just sneaking in, you know, and it was, hey. it was kind of funny, too, because their songs are a little longer than, like, the Gorephobia songs. So, like, <laughs> it almost set, felt like they played longer than Gorephobia. <laughs> yeah, maybe. It was cool, man. It was definitely cool, dude. All right. So, I want to say what's up to everybody in the chat. Yeah, I see. Uh, yeah, we had um, Josh from Suffocation. Yeah, he played that. Living in Australia now. What's up, Gino? I miss you too, brother. Is it true King Fally drank motor oil in front of the Brutal Truth guys? <laughs> it sure is. At, yeah, we were at, we were, after we played the show, we fucking went to party. And actually, there was just a quart of motor oil there. I drank the whole fucking thing down, chugged the whole fucking thing. And then I passed it to Dan. There was nothing in it. And Dan said, I'm going to drink it too. And he took the ring at the top of the fucking quart of oil a little black thing that stays at the end, and he just touched it to his lips. He's like, man, how the fuck did you drink that fucking thing? No fucking man. idea, man. I got no idea. It was a crazy night. Not, not that too was... long after that happened, all, it just, all hell got worse than that. But it oh. never fucking affected me. It didn't make me sick or nothing. I told this story at a party like 20 years ago now. I told this fucking story, and they were like, oh, you're a fucking liar. Like, no way. You'd be dead, and blah, blah, blah. And I said, give me another court right now. I'll do it right now. They went looking. We were in an apartment at the time. They didn't have any in the fucking apartment. So they brushed out Wesson oil, the cooking oil. And I drank that and I got fucking sick as a fucking dog off that. But the motor oil never bothered me, man. They were like, did you That's really? Your metal. I mean, it was right in front of a whole group of people. I'm like, watch this. There you go. That's because you're yes, metal, bro. You're made of metal <laughs> inside. So like I ran, oil I ran smooth for 3,000 miles. Room <laughs> just lubricated you, bro. Make your state metal. <laughs> So yeah, I brought uh I got a little uh let's play a song or so and then we'll get back to talking. Um a lot there was a lot going on that day. So here was one of the bands I played. I, I gotta say too, I invited him on. Uh John Verica uh videotaped a lot of stuff um that day. So he kind of in a weird way, he documented a lot of what happened that day. Uh, I don't know if he's still going to come on or not, but I don't know if he, he said he might not be able to make it. But, uh, yeah, so some of these videos are courtesy of John Verica. Sorry, John, I've borrowed some of your videos, brother. All right, so check this out, though. So this was a band. This was uh, um, 
if I'm not mistaken, uh, Todd from this band, he like his mom set up the Michigan Death Fest. Metal mom. Yep. Whoops. Hold on. I'm losing it.
Yeah, see that mosh pit action going on big time, right? Mosh it up. <laughs> mosh it up, bro. So that yeah, that was October 20th in two th- in 1990. I'm like in two th- uh. <laughs> So 31 years ago, you know? Wow. I was, I was looking at the crowd and they were uh, you had a mix of Morbid Angel shirts. You had uh, mortician shirts, you know what I mean? And uh, there was definitely a circle pit going on there. So that was cool, man. It was a bugged out show. (laughs) Who was that? Who was that band? That was Lucifer's Hammer. Oh, okay. Yeah, they were... uh, I was probably getting drunk when they played, so I don't think... I tried to see if I was in the circle pit, actually, because basically, like, if there was something like that going on back then... I'd probably try to get in the middle of it, you know what I mean? Even if it even if it wasn't my home turf, you know what I mean? I don't care. Like I I don't know. I'm kind of weird. I, I didn't mind getting into the mosh pit and hostile grounds usually. It was kind of fun for me, you know? It was crazy. Yeah, I was all yeah. over that fucking club that day. I know we played kind of early and I and I got if you've read the if you've seen the fucking the book, I got I got thrown out for a fucking couple bands, man. <laughs> I fucking I, I I snuck a half gallon of whiskey in there. I know Alex knows Janice from Philly. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> and oh, me and her awesome. were fucking. We were sucking down a half gallon of whiskey hard as shit. And this fucking bouncer came and he's like, "You're both kicked out." And I was like, "Kicked out? I you know I'm on the bill and blah blah blah." He didn't give a fuck. Fuck you. Get out. So we ended up climbing onto the roof of the building while some of the bands were playing. We were up there fucking sucking down like the whole half gallon of Jack Daniels was gone. It was either that or the fucking uh, Evan Williams offshoot. And fucking after a while, I'm like, I got to get back in that fucking building, man. I got to see fucking autopsy. I got to see this harmonic orchestra. I got to get in this motherfucker. And I went back down there after a while, and he was, and he saw that I, I was under control because Janice was gone. She was fucking trashed. And so um, he let me back in eventually. I talked my way back in, and that was it. But I missed a few bands. Um, I can't remember exactly who I missed, but, man, whew, it was, I was just wide open. And then by the time autopsy came on, it was super late. Fucking! Yeah. I, I was basically oh, kind of yeah. drum roading for them. I was drum roading for them, and mm, uh, I was, I'm right on the stage while the video of them. I'm right there helping him out, and he was going. Chris, Chris was fucking. He, he was out of his mind. He was. I remember him getting sick. He was getting ready to throw up just from the fucking heat, and just you know, me and him were singing drummers. So I knew what he was going through with those those stomach muscles, man. When you're playing drums and doing all that crazy shit. But uh, one thing I did want to say 
was that for as many bands played that day, it was pretty much organized and bands got on and got off and it kept rolling. You couldn't do that nowadays, man. So many bands are unprofessional. They get up there, they finish all of a sudden they've had their, you know, 30 minutes on the stage or whatever it is. And they fucking leave the shit there. They walk over their fucking, you know, their girlfriends want to take a picture or some shit. And it's like fucking the whole thing gets fucking thrown off. You know, you got to keep the shit rolling. And it ran pretty damn good that day. I thought. Yeah. Yeah. I think so too. From what I can remember. (laughs) <laughs> I, I know King too. He likes to make sure the show is mad organized when he's there. So I like that too, though. So because yeah, know, you got to you got to get everybody playing and get their whole sets and all this stuff. Sneak yeah, incantation not, not on too for many, a few songs. <laughs> yeah, not too many encores each band. Like if you have like six, you know, every band gets an encore by the time the show ends. It's like that's what I mean. I don't know how I really was trying to place this because before autopsy went on, I swear to God, there was everyone was laying on the floor of the club, basically. Yeah, I was laying on the floor. You guys remember that? (laughs) Yeah, I do. I was, I actually, I was the one that taped autopsy from that. I actually took a cassette and put that fucker in the soundboard and got that fucking sound man to give me that autopsy soundboard from there. And all those bootlegs that surfaced to that, the seven inches, just over the years, these little, you know, one-offs and things this came off my tape I, I i used to trade it out to people and fucking it ended up all over the place but i definitely soundboard uh taped them from that show mm-hmm. then my then this guy i knew Vinny, he took a bunch of my tapes with him we used to take his walkman when he come visit me and he'd be like let me borrow this i'll bring it back next time blah 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 and that was one of the ones that one day never came back man but so i had it i'm out I'm yeah, still check have a this out check this out it's a little crunchy but here we go it goes out to everybody that stuck around at the end of the show really appreciate it there's a brand new one. It's called Destin to Faster.
faster but you hear that bass I like that <laughs> you hear that bass tone on that one <laughs> that was so, wild when i went to the bass part it just kind of it was so fucking intense couldn't even handle it <laughs> yeah it was, it was like it was sizzling bacon <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then uh that was, that was um brother playing bass i think yeah that was eric cutler's brother playing bass right i invited eric on too but uh he's working right now so he couldn't make it on so I figured why yeah, not. Yeah. When they played, I remember Chris put disembowel out to me, and we used to have this little noise we made. We'd go like this with our, you know, boom, and went. So if you ever hear the full live tape, it goes, This one's for King. And he tries to make the noise on the microphone. It's like, it's the only time he sounds like, you know, kooky. <laughs> He's like, rah, 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 rah. <laughs> and then we then, then when after it happened, the show was like, Damn, night nice. we were pin palling. Oh, it was so good to meet you. And we tried to write that word out. How do you spell <laughs> to this day? Every time I see him, it's like, that ain't it's how so, you spell it, King. <laughs> it's so weird that, you know, we have these memories that there's smallest little things, you know what I mean? But like, and they're usually have nothing to do with the show. There's just like the bonding of between us as a metal heads and friends. You know what I mean? It's so sure. cool, dude. It's the, it Absolutely. lasts for forever too, man. You know? Yeah, it was it was a short time, but it it seemed like an eternity back in those days, you know, especially when you're young and you know things are happening for the first time and and uh, you know and now it's just crazy how long ago. I know, thirty one years ago, man, that's crazy, yeah. crazy, insane. Yeah, I found this. Uh, I found, I had this a scan of it, but I I kept this all these years. Um, so I met some dudes online, basically, right. And then they ended up uh, like, you know, I remember one in particular. Uh, it was Ed from Cattle Press. Uh, I met him on the line. So we were just like, you know, shooting the shit, like waiting to get into the show. You know what I mean? And we were laughing because there was like um, way, way back in the day, you know how they would make like uh, Metallica bootleg shirts, but they wouldn't have the word Metallica on them. So they would take like the logo of Metallica and they would like ride, they would write like ride the lightning, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this guy had the shirt on and uh, I mean, maybe like a year or two before that, I probably would have, I think I even had that shirt, you know? But uh, me and uh, my friend uh, Eddie from Cattle Press, uh, Ed Ortiz, um, he was like, ride the Metallica Express, bro. <laughs> So we were waiting online, and I still have this, which is so bugged out. Oh, nice. This is the ticket to get in. So basically, look at the price of the show. Yeah, you wouldn't get one band now for that. Yeah. 12 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was, I was number 94, I guess, to get in. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. So 12 yeah, bucks. Had, had, a, had a couple zeros to that now you know right yeah yeah <laughs> i still got i still got my backstage pass thing somewhere and my little fucking laminate or whatever that shit it was somewhere <laughs> yeah I, I wanted to do this just to celebrate the day and uh i think about it every year um the, the you know there's a second reason for me because it was the day me and my wife like became like boyfriend and girlfriend too 29 right. years ago so it was like right. two years after the day of death. So, like, in a weird way, I'll never forget the date of the day of there death, you go. basically. You know what I mean? It's, like, permanently ingrained in my life, you know? And also, <laughs> I wanted to, uh, you know, let people know that there's going to be a show. I, I, You know, I, I do death metal podcasts, but this is not, like, I don't do this for dough. I don't do this for payola. I don't, I'm just here to promote the scene. So if you see me showing flyers or whatever you see me doing, no one forced me, you know, nobody grabbed me by the neck and told me to put this on here. But yeah, there's going to be a show with Armageddon Productions, which is Ed Farshley. And then this is in New York, in Brooklyn. And uh, 
it's a day of death and a tribute to Brian Pattison. You got Massacre and Bomber, Brian Pattison's bands playing, Anarchists, Sam Biles, and the man of the hour here, uh, King from Deceased. So Deceased is playing too. Yeah, we want to come out there. We want to, man, I got to celebrate that guy, Brian, man. So missed. Fucking, that's another thing. That just sucks, man. Fucking. Uh, I know. Yeah, he, great guy. Great. Every, everything about that guy, man. Everybody should come out and support that thing just in the name of good, good fucking people in a fucking underground scene that's not the same as it used to be. You know, I ain't here yeah. to woe is me. Fuck all that. We're still doing what we do. And just and do what Brian, we do, man. Just keep, you know, just keep on doing our thing. And there's Roy. We're doing his thing, too. Yeah. And Brian was out there for a lot of Speak people, too. You know, Brian oh, yes. was really out there for a lot of people. If somebody, you know, he, uh, I don't know, if, even if it was his friend, not his friend, even when my daughter had um, leukemia, you know, we had like a thing going on in um, uh, Rhode Island and he sent a care package, you know what I mean, to uh, so we could raffle awesome. it off and all this. So, but, you know, up in his area, and I'm sure a lot of his friends know if anybody chimed in tonight. Um, what do you call it? He would throw benefit shows for people. Um, he really was like a champion to keep his own scene alive. Like so many years later, even doing like a day of death, like part two and stuff, you know? And uh, right. you play Did you play that too, King? We were, the, yeah, we were the only band that went back and did it the second time, man. We were the only one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was weird. Oh, and I know oh, a lot of those bands at the time weren't even together anymore, you know, or, or it was just harder than ever. But yeah, that I mean that was weird. That was it was it was cool as shit, but it was weird because it was so like different and you know, just how much time had gone by by then. I wasn't playing drums and singing anymore. I was just out front speaking on behalf of just how far deceased had moved on in all those years, you know, still keeping it together. But um, yeah, it was fucking cool that he did it again. And you know, he he definitely something he wanted to do so bad, and there was no way I wasn't gonna make it happen. And it's not always the easiest trip to Buffalo, man, at least not from you know, more my um logistics, but um we, we did it many times. He looked out for us so many ways. I remember my other band, October 31, we needed a gig because Oz came from overseas um, to play a couple of American shows. And they wanted to do, you know, a couple more shows. And I was like, I need something. And he wasn't even booking at the time. And he went out of his way and made a killer show for Oz in October 31 up there on a whim. I mean, it was literally short. You know, he had no time to make it happen. And he made it happen. And we got all the people down from Canada that wanted to see Oz. You know, that was their Yeah, because Oz was their from only Australia, shows ever. right? Yeah, Oz, Oz from is Australia? from Sweden. 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 Yeah. My bad. I figured Oz. Yeah, they, they came over to do it. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. <laughs> but they were, it was, it was, they were, I mean, it was super cool. Just, you know, we went out with them every, basically, they came to over here to America to do a festival at Reggie's in Chicago. And then they wanted to keep going. And I said, well, look, I'll book you a week of shows. If you you know, you got, you're in the country for 10 days, let's roll. So we just rolled to Michigan and DC and Boston and New Jersey and New York. But we had that one day we couldn't get in there. And I said, man, can you give me something? And we, and we drove from fucking, I think it was Massachusetts to Buffalo, man, overnight. Mm. And we, it was all of them, all of us and all the gear in a 15 passenger van. I was driving it. And we fucking made it. And I just told Brian, thank you so much. Cause it, we did, we, you know, we wanted to get something up towards Canada and that's the, that's your, that's one of your only places to get those people across and down there that, or like Detroit. And, um, a lot of, it was mostly Canadian kids there to see fucking Oz, man. And I was so happy for those guys for that. And again, like I said, he put it, he made it happen on the spot. He took care of everything. And like you said, he was always out to help anybody. Yeah. Really, really yeah. the real, the real fucking deal, man. I mean, there's yeah. a lot of people that people call the real deal that aren't the real deal. This motherfucker was the real deal. Yeah, he, there's a lot of promoters actually, out there like that aren't really, you know, as as passionate as Brian. You know, he uh, he booked. Uh, it was actually, a, I think, it was a last minute show too for one of the uh, tours I did playing guitar for Master. We played on Easter up in Buffalo, and Brian wow a show together for us actually. You know, made it so, happen. Awesome. Yeah, he made it happen for us, and you know he took care of us. So you know, kudos, man, to Brian. Rest in yeah. peace. Yeah, yeah. Rest in peace, Brian. You know, and I saw him. Like, uh, 2019 was the last time because I think it was um, the last U.S. tour that um, we did. Uh, Immolation, we did in uh, yeah for the last record, and, uh, and you know I remember seeing him there at the show and you know we have to talk for a little bit and stuff like that but right uh, yeah real real you know bummer shock you know just 
For, yeah, for me with Brian, I, w- I was online doing my – I was doing my raffle shit. I was selling some stuff online, and he won something in it. And I came to him, and I said, hey, man, you won this. It was a, it was the original creator two-on-one CD in the early days when Flag of Hate, Pleasure to Kill, two-on-one, the original press. And, and he's like, yeah, yeah, you know, okay, I'll take care of you, blah, 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 blah. And we talked. And then about a half an hour later, I went back to Facebook, and his brother posted, my brother just went to the hospital with COVID. And I went back over and I said, dude, if you, what the hell? I don't want your money, dude. Take this as a gift. You know, fucking. And he was like, no, no, no. I want to pay you. I want to buy. I said, dude, please just get better. And then I, and then later on that day, I said, how are you doing? And he said, man, the pain is a 10 out of 10. And the next morning I said, hey, how are you today? And he didn't reply to me. And that was it for me. I mean, that's, it was terrible, man. Oh, fucking man, terrible. I mean, it was literally like right there. And then that, that quick, that's how quick he was gone, man. It was that quick. Yeah, damn, that's crazy, dude. Yeah, that's kind of sad, dude. You know, it's I'm glad sad. he got to do his. I'm glad he got to do his anthropic band. They were fucking cool. They were grinding. We played some shows with them. I actually sang vocal track on, on the, their CD. Uh, we played shows. He was smiling. I was so happy for him because it was something he always wanted to do. And he just, man, he was the again. I thought that was super cool. cool that he came out and at his age, which is not, pretty abnormal, dude, in a weird way for somebody in their forties, maybe to go and they they're like, you know what, I am starting a fucking band, and not only am I going to start a band, because anybody could kind of fucking start a band, right? They could get their four buddies close by and be like, hey, right, let's start a band, you know. But Brian was rolling the way. That deceased rolled, that gorephobia rolled, incantation, immolation. He got out there and he wanted to get on the road, bro. You know what I mean? He did. He wanted to play small clubs. He wanted to do small tours. I remember he was setting up a tour with anarchists because he was always good friends with those guys. Right, right. And it was like this is so cool, dude. I mean, like that he got to live live that out too. It makes, yeah, me, makes me like happy. happy. It was making me happy when it was happening. And then to see him pass pass on was like wow. But I'm like, you know what, man? At least he got to do that too, though. So yeah, you know what exactly. I mean. That was probably a, a a thing, you know, a dream for him in a weird way. So yeah, so yeah. Let's say rest in peace, Brian. Rest yeah, in peace, did, brother. Much love, you, man. You know. So yeah. Um, let me uh, try and someone else is trying to pop in, but I just keep seeing a blank screen, brother. So. Uh, Try again. Um, check this out. Who's this man? Here we go.
awesome, Less awesome stuff, dude. I remember that. I that was... So we got another <laughs> guy here. <laughs> yeah, Dave. Yeah. The guy who filmed it right here. <laughs> hey, how's it going, man? <laughs> Whoops, I added King's other How you guys here. doing? Hey, what's up, John? What's going on, King? What's up, Alex? <laughs> how's it what's going, up, brother? Man? Looking good. good. I was trying to configure everything, and I had the cover on the lens. <laughs> Dope. What's yeah, up? You got to leave the cover on the lens because yeah. Amazon is watching. You know? Good thing I took it off when I was filming all those bands. <laughs> here, we got another one, too. Here we go. Another New Jersey boy. Hey, here he is. Hey, he drove up with me. <laughs> yeah, you guys documented the day of death, bro. Yeah. John, yeah. you documented a lot of what was happening that day yeah. by videotaping, you know, yeah. all, uh, I guess all the bands, you know? Uh, most, not all. And uh, Chris Bade came up with us, and I did Decaying Visions with him, you remember? And, uh, yeah, Chris Bade, sure. Me. Yeah. So we yeah, did most of the bands. Awesome. Yeah, man. A yeah, lot on cool. stage. And then by the time Autopsy came on, it was like super late. And it actually mm. fell on my 23rd birthday that day, the 21st. And I remember filming against a pole. It was just so late at night, man. <laughs> but I got it, at least most of the set. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like I got out of a sleeping bag to go see them. So at what time? I wonder, I, I always wonder. I think it was after could... 2, maybe. It was really late. Yeah, it was like yeah, 2 o'clock. Yeah. Right. It felt yeah. like 5 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I woke know? up when I get back to the hotel when deceased were partying, so... <laughs> yeah, some of some of us are still there. <laughs> What's up, Damien? How you What's living, up, guys? John, do you remember when we drove up? Uh, like I guess the night before the show, we got there, and you were you didn't really drink or anything. No, <laughs> and you had like two beers, and you were like completely. Out of your mind in the hotel I still drink two beers. <laughs> 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 oh, hey, what's up, Damien? I didn't know you were in there. Hey, buddy. What's up, King? Hey, hey, hey brother. Real quick Brutal. time out, King. Are you coming this weekend? Yeah, if you'll take care of me. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> All right. I found some uh, memorabilia here. Here's an original. Day of oh, yeah. That's one of the red ones, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah that's so that's an original, original. Yeah, man. It's Amazing, dude. I think I still and, have yeah. my white flyer of that, too. All of them are pretty beat up. But check it. This. Check. Oh, wait. He's got he's got more. The man that was my more. pass for the day. What's yeah, that's so it? cool, dude. <laughs> yeah. God damn. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> All access yeah. to friggin' the country yep. club. Yeah, there you go. The sky room. Yeah. So bugged out, dude. And then that Girl. license plate is the car I drove up in. <laughs> up. Yeah, I used to live in South Philly at the time. Yeah. So you still got it. I see somebody had a question for King. Um my friend Andy from Flem. He says, King, are you naturally a lefty or just play open handed? I'm uh, naturally a lefty. I never was. I was self-taught all the drums. I just played like this. I, I guess I kind of grew up punk rocky a little bit, but yeah, naturally left-handed. Never crossed. Never played across like most people would. Just always like this. Hmm. Yeah, cool. Nice. <laughs> My screen is frozen, so if I'm not, I guess you're moving for you guys, but for me, I'm stuck. I'm stuck in yeah. time. Everybody's could, uh... actually stuck in time, and I can't see Damien or John now. I can uh, pop you pop that screen out too, uh, King, if you want, and you could just log it back in. That's up to you, brother. Let me know. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm cool. If you guys, if it's working for you, fine with me. Somebody was asking here, about now your I'm moving. I'm sort King, of moving. Yeah, now it's like, King, yeah, you're, it's like, like a, you're a star here. So, King, <laughs> did I hear right? You have a biography book. Is it sold out? Never seen it in the distro. Sorry for being off. Yeah, it is. It it did three presses, and I think it's like went up to four or five hundred copies. It's called Stay Ugly. It's been out. It's been out of press for like two years now. I I may put it back in press for a little while. We did like three, like three presses of it. Uh, may do that, or I'm also working on another book too. Maybe uh, that's probably a ways off though. Um, yeah, it'll probably come back into press in 2022 for sure. A lot of people have been asking. Came out nice. I was real happy about it, man. It was just a guy came to me and asked me if I wanted to do some like a story on my life, and I was like. All right. It meant a lot to me, my life. But I was like, does anybody else want to read my fucking life? Whatever. And he just stayed on me and we talked and talked and he interviewed me for like, for like two years. And then he wrote a book and he goes, what do you think? I said, it's boring as shit, man. It's my life really that boring. He goes, I want you to write it. 
I said, all right. So it took another two years and I rewrote it. <laughs> but yeah, it's called, it's called stay ugly. It's been out of print a while. And when it, when it surfaces, it's always for some stupid ass price. It's crazy that I wouldn't have nobody put, uh, pay for, but, uh, anybody that wants to read it, I can send it to them via email for nothing. You know, if they want to get in touch, uh, King, I, I, I got it that way. That's the way I got it. I, yeah. Anybody it wants it, you can it. have it. I don't want, you know, it's not about the money. I it just came out. Uh, King Doomstone, K-I-N-G-D-O-O-M-S-D-O-N-E at yahoo.com. I'll gladly send you a PDF file, the whole book, the pictures, everything. It reads like a book. <laughs> there you go. I read it. It was amazing. It was an amazing journey of a metalhead, which is really cool, you know? A lot <laughs> of parallels. I felt a lot of parallels, King, when I read your book. Yeah. I was like, yeah, damn, I'm not even in a fucking band, but uh, feeling a lot of parallels here, you know? It was, it was, it was, it was wild to write, man. It was wild because you kind of you relive it all—the good, the bad, and the ugly, man. Some of those drug stories back then took me back. All of a sudden, like my, I felt like I was tripping on acid sometimes. <laughs> you you went out and got drugs. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, it <laughs> happens, right? It happens. So <laughs> I got another clip here, and I, I'm assuming John taped this because he probably taped everything. Mm -hmm. So this one, it says it's deceased and gorophobia. Check it out. Yeah, that's me.
Remember this day, bro? Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're ripping it, dude. That was fun. Yeah, that's Chuck. Uh, John Verica will remember Chuck. Chuck was one of the other guy with jumping down the stairs at Annie's house. He's sitting in front oh, of the fucking oh, drum. that guy. He's yeah. sitting right there out in front of the. If you look, he's in front of the drum, sitting there. He's just watching shit. <laughs> Is he, he the was, second? He was, yeah, he's the second drummer. I was going to ask before. <laughs> he, 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 was, he was fucking fried chicken, man. We partied so hard before this this day that you know they were all like out of it. There's another guy named uh, I'll send him Alex. He's sitting on the fucking floor on the side. He drank. We were at the fucking. Um, Denny's or IHOP, he took the whole sugar jar and drank the whole sugar jar, the entire jar of sugar, and he weirded it out like shit. He's like, watch this. I mean, that's worse than motor oil in my fucking book, man. He got fucking weird. He was looking at it like he was dead. And I got I got to say this, because all these clips you're playing, <laughs> fucking Dwayne, Dwayne Morris from fucking Decrepit, all the whole concert with Deceased, shrieks, play shrieks from the verse. He just keeps yelling it, shrieks. Every time he comes out to a show to this day, it's all he does is yell that fucking thing. And I wish he was in the set that, that day for him because he would not stop. Good old Dwayne Morris. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah it was fun, yeah. man. Yeah, it was, it was good, good stuff. Sometimes, uh, like, uh, sometimes I've been noticing this. Sometimes if I like, put the video on while we're watching it together, like, <laughs> we could talk about it a little bit. <laughs> because there's like commentary. a lot of yeah, there's a lot going on, you know. You like you see how the crowd is feeling it. You know what I mean? Like, there was somebody who had a question. They were asking. Um, I think someone answered them. Now, they said, uh, "Who's the second guitar player?" And In the seats, said, it was it was Mark. It was Mark and Doug. Doug had the curly hair. Doug was the Doug, one closest to us South, in the camo right. pants. Right. Doug Souther, and it was Mark Adams on the far on that shot there. That you just watched. He was on the other end. Mark West. Yeah, Doug, yeah. That was one of Doug's last shows with us. And you know, me and Doug started the band and then Mark joined after. We started to like we were we were doing shit in eighty four before we even had the name Deceased, but he stayed around till then and he just he, he needed to, you know, he just basically he moved on because he needed to fucking make money to survive and we knew we weren't gonna make it playing feasting on skulls, man. <laughs> You know what, though? I mean, if you wanna say something, I mean he really went out with a bang, dude. You know? Oh yeah, absolutely. But if, he, sure. if there was a time to choose to like make it your last show, I think he chose like the exact best time to do it. Basically, you know. Yeah, he was in the home run stretch for sure. But uh, yeah, it was it, man, it was fun. It was definitely seeing all that stuff. Fucking talking about Luke Lemay there with Gore guts and shit. They were just had demos out then. Oh yeah, yeah. I remember, I'm I calling him Luck. Hey Luck, I was calling him Luck of the Corpse. Because <laughs> <laughs> Luke of the Corpse don't work, man. <laughs> <laughs> It does if you're a Star Wars fan, maybe, but yeah. Um, <laughs> what do you call it? Yeah, I remember meeting him there too, and uh, getting the demo and talking to him and just you know shooting the shit. It was really he was a cool guy, man. You know? Yeah, absolutely. It was just like a, such a huge meeting, like Alex too. Like you know, you gotta um, what, like. Do you remember when you played, or do you have like some memories from like Gorephobia that day? We played about. 20 minutes into getting there we got <laughs> we got there late because we were stranded like i was saying earlier on the side of the road and um it didn't look like we were going to get there at first so we even remember calling john mcintyre at his hotel to tell him like yeah we can't find your drummer he uh went to look for a flat tire i mean a, a new tire for the flat tires we had and he disappeared and um yeah, but long story short, we got there, and I think we went on stage in like 20, I think from what I remember, Suffocation was playing or something, and uh, then we pretty much went on right after them, I think, you know? Mm, cool. And I'm pretty sure I got to see, yeah, I did get to see Deceased. I saw Autopsy, obviously, Mortician played in relation, so I got to catch all Yeah, these. I saw you guys play. That was before I get kicked out for the whiskey. Yeah, <laughs> for a couple hours. I missed a few bands, yeah. but I but I didn't miss Repulsion or Autopsy or Disharmonic Orchestra. Yeah, I oh, missed yeah, a few Repulsion. of those middle bands. Yeah, that's right. Forgot about that. Repulsion, yeah, like three piece too. You know, because uh, Matt wasn't on yep. guitar. I think he was in the army at the time or something like that. Yeah, it was Aaron. Yeah. Yep. I was so. super into Gorophobia at that time too, man. So like, you guys were like, like just I was looking forward to you guys 
and actually deceased too, because just from seeing you at G Willikers or something, you know. Yeah, you know what's funny when I watch it, deceased uh, videos. You know, deceased was around. You know, probably about three, got at least three years before the rest of us were, and they could actually like tune their guitars compared to the rest <laughs> of us. When you watch the videos, it's like you see how much more professional they were than. Than the rest yeah, they actually. If you if you hear if you watch that one clip you just put on between songs, they wouldn't go until it was in tune. I, they yeah. were like, "Hold on, man, I ain't in fucking tune." Sometimes yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah, "Let's yeah. go, man." We, we, you know, you got to keep it rolling. I'm from the school of DRI, where it's song, song, song. Let's go. No yeah. time to wait. Yeah. <laughs> but they, yes, they, yeah, they they took care of this shit. I'll give them that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sounded like good. It was cool, man. Yeah, it, it was. It was, a- uh, it was pretty crazy. I remember, you know, just like having to go right on stage, you know just you know yeah up all night you guys fight so john that was your foot that was yeah, your some old, john from that side yes. of the stage just now we yeah yeah there's an old picture um i've seen i've seen guys. footage from both sides of the stage who who filmed the other side anybody know? You know that's a good question i don't know i did yeah. see somebody else there somebody with another band came along i saw that was filming so it may have been that guy i don't know who he was i'm trying to remember if our buddy eddie came up there we had a guy eddie boyd who filmed all mm-hmm. the early shows too but i don't think he made that one yeah i was gonna think of somebody from our group of people but he would only i don't know but i definitely yeah. i recognized when you did it you had a certain way of filming man and i could tell yeah and i would use uh, effects i built in effects in the camera was, which was like was high oh, yeah. Uh, yeah 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 i remember john i remember john verica who, who was the guy that used to film everything in in michigan ron holt oh yeah ron holt man yeah, yeah. Maybe maybe it was him. I don't know. I don't think he came out for that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So a shout out also to anybody who put things on the internet that I might have uh, capped for this episode. I mean, I just want to give credit to definitely Disposable Underground, and then obviously John Verica, who's on with us right now. And then um, you know, any there's a lot of photos and you know things that you see on the internet, obviously. So I'll give them a plug too. Boom. Check out their blog. And then they had a couple photos. Like, here's you. You're a little covered up there, though. Uh, uh, King. There we go. There's Les. Dave Dave Vincent wants that Gibson bass bad to this day. Oh. He t- every time he saw Les, he's like, man, I need that bass, man. I got to have that fucking bass. Whatever yeah. you want, man. Name your price. <laughs> Les never <laughs> sold it. Yeah, that's sick as hell, man. And then, um, <laughs> so two minutes after the, this band got there, they were on stage, and I noticed their equipment is kind of interesting, too. Yeah, that was, uh, I had Doug from Suffocation's guitar, and John was using John McEntee's guitar. Yeah, there you that's go. bugged out. We didn't you got your... Uh, Rigor mortis. It looks like you have a sweater, like a rigor mortis sweater. You're rocking it's a rigor mortis shirt over the sweater. Yeah, I, I, I've brutal. seen people comment about that. Oh, where'd you get a rigor mortis sweater? I was like, nope, it's not a sweater. It's a t-shirt. You got your all access pass on your pants there too. The same one uh, that uh, John was showing before. That was su- yeah. super sick. So yeah, man, that was definitely. I mean. Back then, you weren't even in immolation. You were in Gorophobia. So, like, obviously, you were even probably fanning out in a weird way, too, right? If you got to see, if you got to see immolation, I'm assuming immolation played after Gorophobia. Uh, well, I saw immolation. I mean, I know know the guys since the band started, so I saw yeah a zillion times. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but like even at that show, <laughs> like in a the weird way, all, like you were probably still fanning out like me. Yeah, I mean, the band I was actually looking forward to seeing, well, there was two, was uh, Autopsy and Repulsion. They were like the two bands that, you know, Deceased, yeah. I played, I've seen a zillion times too, you know, already prior to that, you know, so uh, Autopsy, I had never saw. And we trashed of. Annie's house way before that. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> many, many times. I think some of that stuff's documented. <laughs> You know, I saw that. Know. I was there when that your boy was sliding down the friggin' stairs with oh. the friggin' uh, blanket <laughs> or whatever the hell he was. On top of it, they were uh, King. I think it was King and Chuck were like puking, doing like making each other puke or something for yeah. Voivod or something like that. I don't know. I can kind of remember like you guys. Yeah, we were drinking Voivod vodka. You're drinking boy vodka. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Your, your friend would your friend would stand at the top of the stage and you'd be like, "This one's for away." <laughs> like, do like, yeah. We just that's what we did. We just started leaping. 
John got yeah. Chuck a real good one to Chuck, but I like first time I just tried to leap the whole stairs. Then we were like, I fuck it, you. let's just fall like four or five <laughs> stairs down. I like to say, I don't guess there's no outtakes, John, to that shit, but that shit no. was crazy. No, I, I saw King, King, I saw you going down those stairs too, dude. <laughs> I, was, I had those bare, those bare feet on. They were like Annie's bare, bare feet. feet. Yes, that's right. Yep. And well, you know, not to, not to talk shit on the dead, but it was the uh, the Chuck Shoulder squirt gun. Do you remember that? The Chuck, Chuck Shoulder <laughs> squirt gun. <laughs> yes, it was. And every and everywhere we looked around in that room, there was that big ass Dwayne Almond picture that looked at everybody. Yeah, and yeah, the yeah, eyes are that. following me. The yeah, eyes are yeah. following me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> isn't John? Isn't there like a decaying visions? Uh, isn't there like a commercial for like the Abominog seven inch or something? Yeah, there is. Oh, that yeah. is from that yeah. session of going down the stairs at Ann's house, man. Yeah. Yeah. You, you should make note that was a uh, they were row homes in Philly there. So the neighbors, can you imagine if the neighbors were hearing? <laughs> Up and down those Good Lord. Yeah, yeah. Someone's getting murdered over there. They're like, nah, it's like that every weekend. You know what it's that 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 night in particular, we played an early show in Philly. It was deceased incantation agoraphobia. We played yes. in the afternoon, right? Yeah. King, I think. JC Dobbs. Uh, yeah, JC Dobbs. Yeah. And then it was so full too. on <laughs> fucking party. Cause I I think we were already started at the at the venue because they JC Dobbs gave us a bunch of cases of beer or whatever. I don't think they really right. Paid it. We gave us a bunch of beer, and we already started there. And then by the time we got to Annie's, it was uh, full on mayhem. You know? She she had yeah. a she had a keg in the bait. I think it was a keg in her basement. Because I remember some girl, yeah. some blonde girl there, and she was like, "Here, stop jumping down the stairs and come drink beer." And it was a big keg in the basement. Weren't you there, Damien? Yeah, I was there too. Yeah, I remember you sitting yeah. in the chair oh, yeah. like, "What the fuck's yeah. going on here?" <laughs> yeah. She had a big ass anvil bitch friggin' thing painted on her wall. Yeah. Her. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Everywhere in every room in the house, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was anvil bitch headquarters. Yeah, yeah, that was the anvil bitch headquarters. That was a cool party spot. Shout out to Annie. Shout out uh, to Annie. And they'll be on Death Metal Podcast. I tried to uh, hit her up the other day because uh, her name gets brought up a lot, actually. You know, so, She should uh, write a book, too. <laughs> she should. Yeah, I think, I think she's, she's trying to, one. I think. Yeah, yeah. She's, yeah. yeah, she's writing a book. Cool. That's awesome, too, because uh, that's needed. I mean, she got to see up close a lot of stuff. And also, <laughs> she she's not in a band. She's just a fucking promoter, you know what I mean? So, like... You see, you know, you might see things in a different spectrum from being a band who comes from out of town, had a drive for like eight hours, yeah. goes well, there, she, sets up, you know, sells merch, leaves, well, stays pretty, at hotels. Yeah, this is somebody was, that like set up the show, you know? Yeah, she was pretty instrumental in the, in the South Jersey scene because, you know, she met me and Chris in, I guess, sometime in 89 or whatever, because well, I was putting flyers in there for agoraphobia shows we were doing in Philly. And uh, <clears throat> she didn't really know anything about the underground. And I just kind of like, you know, just started showing her stuff and demos and little by little, you know, would say, hey, bring these guys, bring deceased, bring, contact these guys, contact primeval, contact ex mortis, nuclear death, you know, immolation. And that's kind of how it started, you know, and then it was just like, Fucking, you know, even when like even 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 when deceased wasn't playing, those guys would be down partying anyway on the weekends, you know, like King and Oh Martin yeah, wasn't it? Hop, skip, and a jump, boy. That's all it was. Hop, skip, and a jump. Yeah, <laughs> we yeah. were there. It was, which was, it was so like cool everybody. because it was like so many like uh, states united just in that one club, and then like the the town itself is like a fucking bomb shelter, basically. <laughs> yeah. It's like the most, it's like, it's like yeah, the yeah. number one worst town in America or something. Yeah, next but to it, we, Camden. <laughs> yeah, so we we were down there. Yeah, that's what I meant, Camden. So basically, uh, we were down there, like from New York, New Jersey. King, you're from Virginia. Maryland was there. Ex yeah, guys were there. Ted was always yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. John, were you, you were Philly back mm -hmm. then, or you Jersey? I, I moved in '91, so it was both. Yeah. Okay, and and Damien, Jersey, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah, South Jersey though. So I was the North Jersey representative. You were the South. Yeah. <laughs> you, yeah. Chris Bade, and uh, uh, Debbie uh, or something. Debbie Stelno, yeah. Stelno, yeah. Yeah, you I remember. Know. I remember the scene oh, down there. The underground, right, Damien? Yeah, it's not of the underground scene she was doing at the time. And I think yeah. you, you contributed to that too, didn't you? Yeah, I did like yeah, artwork and reviews and interviews yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, then we also really lucky at, at that time, like 
at the right place at the right time seeing some of those bands that I don't I don't know if they ever like toured anywhere else, but like stuff like Necrophile or yeah, like, Necrophile, Necrophile. Just Death, I mean, they just yeah, tour right. They just kind of did yeah. that one show and that was it. I mean, I think they yeah, came yeah, over no, with no, no next place. Yeah. Next to yeah, Necrophile, I brought them. Necrophile was with me. We brought Necrophile, came to America. They stayed with us, man. That the man, the fucking funniest story with Necrophile, man. We we got them out one night. I brought a bunch of fucking old uh, party girls out, and I was trying to get all those guys laid in America. And we went down to this fucking park with all these girls, and I was trying to hook them all up and stuff. And the cops came, and these dudes were trying to play like they didn't speak any English, so the cops wouldn't fuck with them. And all of a sudden, they're like, "You're all going to jail." And he's like, 21, 21, I'm twenty one, holding up his beer." <laughs> <laughs> Those guys were the fucking best. They stayed yeah. at my house for a couple of days, man. Mm. Yeah, I remember yeah. that. Those guys. Don't realize it. They played there, you know. It's, that was yeah. 1991. <laughs> Fatal, too. Like That was amazing mm -hmm. to be able to Fatal, see. yeah. They played that one show. Yeah, Nuclear Death. Uh, Fatal, yeah. Horophobia, Ex Mortis, and Prime Evil. I think that was the show, if I remember yep. correctly. Yeah, that's a, some badass lineups. I was saying the other day that, uh, what do you call it? When I would go to those shows, there was times when I didn't even hear the bands, basically. Like, <laughs> I was the first time I was hearing them was there. Did anybody else have that experience? Or you guys were just, you knew, you knew maybe Damien? No, there's a lot of bands I saw for the first time. Yeah. Like the first time hearing them, right? Was it the yeah. first time hearing them too? Because that's how yeah, it was yeah. for me sometimes. Yeah. I was like, wow. I'd buy their like, demo and I'd get into them. Yeah. Yeah. Which is like a, a different way to like take in your music. You go to a live show and like the band, you know, there's so many like minded bands there. There's only a few bands. So there's, you're not overwhelmed by this like whole festival mentality where you have like 12 bands. Mm -hmm. So it's like four bands, you know? And then, like, uh, you might know one or two bands, you know what I mean? And then, like, the other bands that are playing, you might not even have heard of, heard, heard of them, much less heard them, you know what I mean? And then by, like, a song into it, you're, like, a half a song sometimes. I'm like, oh, my God, who is this, dude, you know? Like, this is sick, dude, you know? So it's just so bugged out that that was happening so many times over. I... That happened for me with agoraphobia, Alex. Oh, okay. I mean, for me, yeah. it was cool because, uh, <clears throat> you know, these were bands that I you know, was tape trading with and stuff, you know, for a couple of years. And, you know, even a band like uh, Hellwitch, you know, was, you know, I remember getting into Hellwitch maybe like 80, 86. I got uh, from my friend uh, Scott Hellwig used to do a, a zine called Total Thrash. Mm -hmm. So he used to like give me a lot of stuff and uh, you know, it was just cool. Like, you know, seeing like torture chamber played in front of me for the first time, you know, stuff like that, you know? So, so it was just cool to see all these cool bands, you know, play, play there, um, you know, that I had, you know, tape trading with nuclear death, another band, you know, that I was into for, you know, since 87 or, or whatever. So it was just cool to see them playing in front of me for the first time and to see, Beyond you know? Yeah, beyond I remember, I remember, I I had the, the I actually had the first demo I I wrote to you King in '87 because same thing my friend Scott that did a zine called Total Thrash. <clears throat> he um, yes, oh yes, oh demo, Scott Healing. Your first demo, I can't remember what the, what the hell is that called? Uh, oh, Evil shit. side of religion. Evil side of religion. That's it. Yep. That's it. 86 demo, right? You were, you were, you were friends with Scott, he Scott Helick from Total Thrash? Yes. Yeah, he did EAB and mm -hmm. C That's C awesome. EAB I used to write him all the time. He had the band Epileptic Albino Bullfrogs. Epileptic Albino Bullfrogs, yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Saw them many times, too. You know, I used to see them practice and they used to play. Sorry, right, my, my, my shit's time delaying. So if I'm answering you like 37 years in the future, man, it's just, <laughs> just the motor oil kicking in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, it was right through you. You know, so it was just cool. Yeah, I, I liked my band. my thing was this, and I don't know if I don't know if Damien was at this. The first time we played G Willikers, a fight broke out, and a friend of mine, Rennie Resmini, a local guy that I knew, he did yeah. a magazine too. He, he um they threw him out for breaking up the fight, man. So we stopped playing. I was like, fuck this place. You guys can eat shit. We walked off the stage halfway through it. We laughed, and then Annie 
got in touch with us and she said, it's a better place now. I'm running the show. And we went back and there was still problems. As we all know, it got out of hand with the skinheads and all that mm. shit later on. But I, I we yeah. went up there so many times. I remember, it was, I think one of the shows I remember most was Brutal Truth and Exit 13 was one of the yeah. shows I remember, I think. And Disrupt. That one that was one a crazy too. show. One of them was yeah. really out of hand. I think that was the one. I have that on cassette. Because, yeah, that's uh, right. But yeah, that was that was the problem. Were you, Damien, were you there for that? Yeah, I was there. That was, that was the first time I uh, I heard Deceased. And the night before. Yeah, came, we fucking we stopped. The, uh, I'm like, fuck this place. Like, we were like in the middle of our show. The night before that, we drove up to uh, see Napalm Death in New York. Oh, was that oh. with uh, Napalm Revenant? Death? Yeah, 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 and Immolation. Yeah, Immolation played in Revenant, I think it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Revenant and yeah. That was the, yeah right. with the car with one door on it, right? We had one door on the side. It was <laughs> well, look, like you. I think you drove up to that. It was like, a Toyota you, with like eight people our... in it. We had one of the doors was I got a had a fucking bungee cord to keep it on. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you got to do what you got to do when you're young, right? <laughs> hey, we, like, we're we getting there. We didn't miss there. that fucking show, did we, Damien? <laughs> <laughs> I tell the story. I was like, it was the first night I met King, and he like. All these guys from Virginia come up. We pile in Chris Bade's car, and like King starts talking. The moment we left, like New Jersey to go to New York, and he never stopped talking the entire ride. <laughs> Not even to this day. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that, that was another Fucking great classic one. Was, time, like, you know, uh, Lee Dorian was still singing for Napalm Death at the time. So no, that was Barney. That was no. Barney. no, it was yeah. Barney. Barney? It was Barney. Yeah. Oh, was it Barney? Yes, oh, okay. yeah. it was we all Jesse thought Jesse. we all thought Lee Dorian was going to be there, and then I thought that, it was Barney. Uh, I oh. thought uh, what's his face was going to be there too. Like I thought uh, it was whoever it was Jesse on guitar. Just yeah, Jesse, Jesse was on guitar. That was it was completely confusing. I was like, whoa, what the fuck? What the fuck? It yeah. was Barney King. He said King Foley. I'm chuffed. <laughs> <laughs> King I'm chuffed. Foley. That's what he called oh, King man. Foley. I'm chuffed. <laughs> the first oh, the man. first napalm death show was the night before it was with um john zorn's torture garden i think it was at cbgb's or something CBGB's, or some art yeah. place and that show you're talking about we went to was the saturday show second show was it was that streets yeah it was that streets. streets with immolation and uh revenant i remember that was a really important show for me you know hey, the stage the stage was sideways in there like it was the short way yeah, and they let people stage dive in there, which was cool. Where they didn't let really let most clubs like no one, nobody. I mean, some clubs they let you stage dive, but like in that place, like there was like a line, there was like a line to stage dive at all times, basically. <laughs> yeah, so wait in line. Cool. Hey. It's like, hey, I got my ticket right here. You're next. All right, yep, you, you get to yep. ride the crowd no. for five minutes. <laughs> Bloody chuffed. <laughs> Street. <laughs> I'm pinging. I'm pinging. As he streets was, was hard. Streets was a hard ass club, man. Yeah, streets so was I think I think we're getting off the topic of day of death, yeah, but uh, yeah. these are all important things because a lot of yeah, the it's bands, all related, man. In a weird way, yes, all the bands, like especially the G Williker set of bands, it was like a lot of those bands ended up being on the day of death, a day of death. You know what I mean? Where you had, you know, incantation, mortician, immolation, you know what I mean? Uh, and so on, deceased, you know? So it was like, and then we were kind of like meeting up with like the, the Baphomet and the Cannibal Corpse and, you know, like the more... Was that Radiation band. Sickness? They played too? Radiation Sickness? Yeah, Radiation Sickness played. Um, there was, it was like... It was so yeah, bugged out that orchestra, which nobody ever talks about. They got put on because they were in the country. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I went to that other disharmonic orchestra show too at uh, oh, the Rhode Island Willikers. No, it, they played at G Willikers. Yeah, they played at G. Then, then we did Rhode Island. Too. There you go. Yeah, that yeah, they, they they went they played in G Willikers, and then Martin, their drummer, went went with me, and he stayed at my house for a week. <laughs> and that's why oh, their yeah? next album comes out. If you look on the back band picture, he, the, the little stuffed animals weren't a deceased hat. <laughs> <laughs> he literally stayed martin stayed for a fucking week at my house he was just like cool. oh man i never want to go back i'm like really this is all you want to do is sit here in arlington virginia <laughs> interesting 
Yeah, those it was uh, that that show and and those guys in general were really good. I mean, super like uh, technical, but like so yeah, know, weird. Super well, Definitely weird. well played. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like live, it was so well played and interesting to uh, watch them. Um, you know, yeah, I think like, the only band that was missing from uh, Day of Death was like Nuclear Death or something. You know, <laughs> but uh, right, so. Yeah, back then at, um, uh, you know, see, like I said, the two scene, like not, you know, there, obviously you had bands coming like Radiation Sickness, you had Lucifer's Hammer, you know what I mean? So you had like, the, the convergence was just insane. And all, and you know what, too? For all of us, I'm sure we all felt this way at the time. It was like, oh, shit, I get to see Autopsy now for the first time, right? Yeah. Is that everybody's first time, obviously, seeing Autopsy? Definitely, yeah. Yeah. I remember was, uh, waiting in yep. line to get in, and Les was uh, from Deceased. He was like, oh, my God, Autopsy has, like, T-shirts. Like, they're selling T-shirts here, and uh, Gore Guts. He's like, you want to get me one? I'm like, yeah, yeah. So I gave him, like, 20 bucks to get me a Gore Guts and uh, Autopsy shirt, and he, he brings them back to me in line. Nice. Sick. He looked out for yeah. you. Yeah, I yeah, think you know, just because you couldn't get all topsy shirts anywhere at that time. Yeah, yeah. Right. I remember buying merch at that show. I bought uh for some reason I bought like primeval shirts, I bought like a suffocation hat, I bought like uh you know an autopsy shirt, and uh the most excited I got was I, I had gotten a repulsion uh shirt at the at the show, you know. I was like, damn, dude, I can't believe I'm about to see Repulsion, man. You know? Yeah, Repulsion and Autopsy were the two most exciting to see, for sure. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, it was weird because the the Autopsy energy was different because everybody was drunk and it was the end of the night. But, like, the Repulsion energy was, like, a little, like, stronger. You know what I mean? Everybody was, like, super, like, you know, like, just pumped up, you know? It was it was it was a good moment, man. It, it just felt, you know, like just so, so many things about it just felt so right, you know, which is cool. So yeah, there was no I, lulls. There was no lulls in the day for sure. There was no nah, lulls. No, nah. the thing just all day. Everybody was doing their thing, and it wasn't like okay, eh, I go break for lunch. Like a lot of festivals later on, as we all know, eh, I can miss this part of the day. You got to like plan your day. Back then, you didn't want to miss nothing, man. Even oh, though I no. did miss a third of it. Well, you got thrown out. Whiskey so in my hand. It's kind of that, understandable. So this is probably John because <laughs> it's from the side of the stage. But so. I got back yeah. in somehow. I got back in. I think. Chris Bade filmed this. Yeah, we're gonna leave. The, we're gonna leave the commentary on this time because okay. I, I like sometimes I like to talk about what's going on. Cool. Yep, I did. It was a huge camcorder. Okay. Right the top, right? Did you have the camcorder that you had a hold on your belt? Like there was like a VCR? There's a case running. <laughs> That's the case? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Still have it. Was there a VCR in there with it? With the uh, thing? <laughs> I have it in another uh, folder. I still have it. You still have that camcorder? Yeah, I do. Wow. Still works. <laughs> yeah. yeah, these guys murdered it that day, man. That was the stench of, what was it? The, uh, that intro, that Napalm Death capped the intro, you know? <laughs> da, na, 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 na. <laughs> <laughs> It's so weird, John. 
get, I gotta uh, really give it out to you because it's so weird that you had just captured a moment in time back thanks, then. Man. Yeah, I just, wanted to spread the word you, for bands, and then you know, I did the whole zines. I did, I did a thing called thrash metal zine in the '80s, and uh, with a couple guys. And then I met Chris Bade, and we went over and did death metal, and I did the decaying visions. Actually, my first interview was with King in '89. I, I think at G Wilkers in yeah. the tour. Hey, John. Yeah. Oh, and then, no, dude, I interviewed you in Thrash Metal back in like 89 at Union Station, if you remember in Delaware. Looney Tunes shirt. Same. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> You're wearing the same shirt? <laughs> Fucking Looney Tunes in the toilet of the Delaware place. Yep. <laughs> it's not right. the same one, yeah, but it's right, the same man. shit. Yeah. yeah. That wow. one ain't going to fit me now, guys. Good. I'm not so two of them together. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. But hey, guys, I got to get going. Remember, I, 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 I was wearing like, this. You interviewed me in the bathroom of the place. That's right. All right. Yeah. Cool, Alex. What was the name of that place? It was in Delaware. Yeah, got, you got, uh, Year one or something? <laughs> all right, good guys. seeing you, Alex. Thanks for sharing your guys, memories, man. brother. Cool, man. All right, all right guys. Have a good See one. Take it easy, my man. Alex, be good, brother. Great seeing you, buddy. Congratulations on everything, too, by the way. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure he'll watch the playback. Congratulations, Alex. We're really proud of you for being a dad. Yeah. It's good stuff, man. It's the best feeling. But you'll always be a mother. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, let's try to uh, share up some other treats here. I got a. Uh, I made this special mix just straight off a of soundboard tape. Check it out. What's called Joy for Free. Crazy snare flying. Dude, that bass, that bass tone was crazy, dude. I was digging that snare speed, man. That's more my thing. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You had uh Matt Sitcher back. The death then. rattle. Yeah. Da, 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 I love it. I remember that day. I remember partying with Matt Sitcher that day a lot. Um, I remember he was uh super chuffed because uh I guess uh, he went in the back, or he met a female that uh, they yeah. got a, they got along. Let's say, you know what I mean. And he was super happy. He's like, "Dude, you know, it just happened, man. It was awesome, <laughs> you know." <laughs> super uh, cool dude, man. It's weird to think how long he's been passed away, too. Mm. You know what I mean? So many years, you know. And uh, Matt Sitcher was a really cool dude, man. I mean, his grinds were off the hook dude you know you know i mean it's only like such a long long time to uh that he's passed away dude i can't even it sometimes bugs me out you know what i mean i think he, 30 years yeah like 27 years or some shit mm -hmm. you know what i mean it's like super super long mm -hmm. he uh yeah like mortician in general i mean they were kind of like they were kind of scary, right? <laughs> you know, you see these guys, and it's just like, I mean, this oh, is Will. Will with, he was singing for more uh, incantation, which this is kind of a rare shot because uh, mm -hmm. he doesn't have his bass. So uh, Jim Rowe took this photo, or or Jim Rowe's girl at the time, and then you got Will without a bass. You know what I mean? And then. Uh, there's Ronnie Dio right. in the back with his mm -hmm. God flesh shirt on. He was probably like 16 years old at the time, you know? Yeah, I Not filmed them in two rollers with, with Will. Well, Ronnie. Yeah. Ronnie just looked like he was 30, but he was yeah. like 16. <laughs> he did. <laughs> 
So yeah, I'm gonna say this again too. There's um a there's something coming up for Brian Patterson, you know, um, that everybody should check out. Here's uh the flyer. They're gonna do like a day of death for uh Brian Patterson, um, which is totally awesome. Uh Ed Farshley and uh, mm -hmm. Glorious Times Productions with Massacre, Deceased, and Bomber, and uh, Sam Biles. Of course, you got to have yeah. Sam Biles on that, you know? Yeah, Mortician. Oh, Ladies Yeah. Primal footage. Hell yeah. Rest in peace, Matt, for sure, brother. Yep, that was Matt on drums. Mortician demo landed in my hands at the church house in and got me in the underground scene. That's what I'm saying, brother. What's up, Derek? <laughs> That's Derek from Head Rot. I see you guys from Cheers. Flem. Yeah, I see you guys from Flem, Head Rot, uh, Derkada in the chat, um, Francisco from Jamming Out All Badass. I don't know who HM Rock is, but what's up? Uh, what's up, everybody? Just hope you're having a, a good time, enjoying Cheers. old memories. Yeah, day of death 31 years ago today. It's like so bugged out, dude. It's like, how old am I? God damn, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's crazy. You, start... you still remember stuff like so vividly, though, from that day. I remember a lot of stuff, dude. I remember. I'm going to show something here, which I think I uploaded. I remember this moment literally being captured, just being a fan kid on the side. And I think I copped. So you had Jeff Walker, and he was clean, he was selling Derkata <laughs> shirts or something and demos, <laughs> you know? They taped a sign to his hair or whatever. <laughs> yep, I remember that guy on the show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There was this guy too who was at the show and but he wasn't in incantation at the time and he was just chilling out watching the show. Oh yeah, man. Craig. Wow. Craig Pillard. Yeah. Uh, rocking uh rocking uh Glenn. an arm sling. Oh. <laughs> So I'm not sure what had happened, but yeah, he wasn't even in Incantation at the time. He nice. was in, he was in, he probably was in Putrefact at the time, because wow. some of the guy, like some of the guys I was talking about earlier, like Ed, like they hung out with Putrefact, you know. Actually, so yeah, Craig I just there the as a fan, running. not even as like a friggin', you know, as a band playing guy, you know. I was actually uh, playing guitar with Putrefact right before uh, they broke up. Really? Yeah. Oh shit. So you would go down Art's basement? We, I would, because I, I would drive up to Brooklyn and and, uh, and yeah, I don't, I forget whose uh, place we were practicing at. at the, no, actually, no, it was a studio. We practiced in mm. a studio at the time. At the end, it was some studio okay. in like Brooklyn or something like that. With Omar? Yeah. Oh, sick. Yeah, sick. And, yeah, Omar is my boy. I haven't talked to Omar in like a, a zillion, bazillion, zillion years. I talked to Art. Um, and then I know there was like Frank from Decay was in Putrefact at some point. Was that when you were jamming? Because the the, like the, the, uh, Nick uh, Orlando from Evoken and Funebrarm, he was in uh, Putrefact. And then you had uh, the Craig one, was in Putrefact. The one Who guitarist, else? like he left and after or Putrefact broke up, I think he formed like Ceremonium. Ceremonium. Or? Tom. Yeah. Tom. Yeah. Keely. Tom. Yeah. Yeah. Was in uh, Putrefact too. Yeah, because he was he was the one showing me all the uh, riffs and stuff. Yeah, well, he was like the band hijacker guy. You know what I mean? <laughs> he would just go and try to hijack bands like after they wrote all their music. So anyway, moving right along. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let's see if I got. <laughs> let's see if I got something else I could play here. All right, so this should be pretty cool. Um, a little bit more of this. Addition. Whoops. Good way, boys. How are we doing it? I go well, my boy. Yes. Mutilated, mutilated.
loving that warm vinyl feel. Yeah, yeah. This was a bootleg from Mexico that came out almost immediately afterwards. Who did oh, that? Really Is that Steve O'Bannon that did that from Seraphic Decay? Um, I don't think so. It was like a, a no? Mexican record label. So let's oh, check yeah. out the immol- let's check out the immolation. Be right after the outro here. some live stuff from that show it's so i bet you king fowley was the one that put that tape out there and that's how that came out right (laughs) (laughs) it wasn't me i i I think it was steve o'bannon because i remember him having a bunch of them oh yeah i remember him having a bunch of the more some morbid angel bootleg and a bunch of other stuff 
they're writing the whole book oh, about yeah, everything. Man. Okay, <laughs> and then uh, some of the members, some of the people that were wow. writing it, I, I was uh, speaking to them about some things that they didn't even seem like they knew what they were talking about, basically. So I was like, oh, okay, you're just making a picture book. I get it. <laughs> you know, like so. If you don't wow. really know the real story yeah, behind the stuff that you're writing about, you probably shouldn't be writing a book on it. No offense. It's a rough DK right, book right. guy or whatever. Yeah, yeah, I met that guy one time when I was at a show in um, Electric Banana in Pittsburgh, and he was just saying uh, he had all these bootlegs. He was like, oh, man, I do this and that and that and this, and I don't give a fuck and blah, blah, blah. And he was just throwing it all out there. I mean, you so many bands Steve he put O'Bannon? out, I had no idea he did it. Wow. You met What's Steve that? O'Bannon. You're saying you met one Steve One time. O'Bannon? Wow. Like I that. met him. We tried so, to meet him. We tried he was to keeping meet him a little key house. that night, but I was like, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I heard he had a record press at his house or some crazy shit for sure. I don't know. You know what? I mean, I, I will give Steve O'Bannon some credit. Um, when I was a young buck, and I guess it was like 1990 or 91, I had asked him, like, where do you press those records, you know? And uh, he gave me an address of uh, a place called Bill Smith Custom Records in California. And then uh, I started going to them when I put out uh, my first seven inch in like 93 or whatever, which was Ceremonium. But uh, yeah, so I think he was getting his stuff made at the, in Bill Smith's custom records. But yeah, as far as there was yeah. some additional, you know, there might have been some additional things going on because like, I don't know, I had it the other day. Somebody sent this in the mail to me. It's a whole stack of like old Seraphith UK seven inch covers that I had. Like somebody at some point when wow. I was sending <laughs> mail out, they had sent me like all these additional ones, you know? These are some classic covers, I, too, you know? Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, I remember him out there, and it was also Sean Panic, Psycho, remember PS Records? Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. That guy. That guy got me into some stuff with his compilation tapes that he would put out. Yeah, he's a good guy. I always like Sean. Yeah, released Psychos, and then uh, he put out a couple good, really good seven inches. I was really into that uh, dude and his label, and yeah, they were they were freaking awesome, dude. Damien, it's, Damien, it's freaking me out. I just you have this black background. It's so cool. You're like a floating head. <laughs> it's awesome. I feel like you're like in a fucking like a William Castle movie. I mean, you look fine to me, when you, brother. When you, when you go down enough so I can't see the print on your shirt, it's just the head floating. So, I mean, it's, see right now, that's great, man. It's kind of like in the it's theme like, uh, of like the Indonesian horror, right, Damien? Yeah, I'm out there have, floating like, uh, yeah. witch head. Exactly, a floating yeah, fucking it's witch head. Bali. Exactly, the liak coming at you, you know? <laughs> do a little Bollywood for us, man. Give us a dance, man. Yeah. Exactly. I'm going to do my singing dance routine now. <laughs> Yeah, a dramatic death, you know. I was just, so, yeah. I was just looking awesome. uh, back when I was trading tapes and stuff and recording shows. I actually have the full show uh, from Immolation from the Day of Death. Yeah, so do I. And I was trying to find it because I wanted to put my copy on instead of whatever was like on the internet. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so I was like looking around, and I found, I found the full tape of uh, this full tape of Autopsy at the Sky Room. It says. Day of Death, you know. This is probably. Now, is you, do you have a? Is that my? Is that my soundboard you got there, Roy, or no? I mean, it's there's a couple releases on here. This is a a, a second show in Buffalo, oh, at, okay. uh, uh, with Gorephobia. Here, I'll put it on big real quick. So it's the second show at the Sky Room with Gorephobia. And then some abhorrence from Finland. I see someone tape me some uh, live, but there is a. This is a soundboard of the autopsy day of death. Yeah, that's that's the one I taped. I put my I had I because I brought a tape for deceased and I had a B side, so I said tape fucking autopsy on side B of this motherfucker. And the guy's yeah. like, "Am I allowed to do this?" I said, "Yeah, absolutely, you are, man." Put I don't know in. if it was just that particular soundboard but there was other ones too like i i threw my entire collection like i have like the incantations thing i have the morticians thing and then i had a version of the morticians uh like live soundboard from that show that was not even the same one as that was released on their like mortal massacre cd like i had the actual soundboard soundboard you wow. know what i mean yeah and then uh 
Wow. I never, I've, I've never heard any Repulsion one. I've never heard any Disharmonic Orchestra one. Um, I don't. I think I saw a Suffocation one floating around, but back I wasn't super into Suffocation, so I probably didn't like try to get that. You know what I mean? But yeah, it seemed right. like there was a bunch of soundboards from that show, and then there was audio tapes that came off John Verica's friggin' videos, even dude. You know? Yeah. Where you sometimes get a recording and it'd say Day of Death, and it, it actually had come from like John's video. Someone just like ripped yeah. it onto audio. John said also that he was uh, Audi, so he said thanks yeah. and all that stuff. I I'm had to ask off here too, guys. Cool, brother. Um, so yeah, it was good talking with everybody. Jamie, I'll hit you up, brother. Yeah, I'll see you yeah, this man. weekend. I'll I'll hit you up. I'll get in touch. Okay, thank you, man. Uh, all right. Yep. No problem. What are you guys uh, doing this weekend? Yeah, I'll talk to you later, Roy. Take it easy, brother. Thank you for coming on. Right. On. What are you guys doing thanks for this weekend? Now, yeah, he's he's doing a horror time. By my house, oh. a horror convention over here. Right, you know, exactly. da Damien made a career out of his out of his living dead dolls. Man, he, I mean, when those things were like when he would just go to the convention set up, he would go to Michaels or one of those places and buy these little baby dolls. And him and Ed, his buddy Ed, would fucking turn them into these little gothic schoolgirl things, and everybody would come buy them. And at some point, I guess some some Japanese company came and they bought them. So all those living dead dolls you see in Spencer's and everywhere around the world. They were the ones that invented those. That's that's their invention, man. Yeah, the, Damien is the man. Real low key guy. He never right? did make but, a King uh, Fally doll. He promised me, but I guess it would take a lot of material. So I, I'll give I him mean, maybe that he, maybe there's still life in that though, because you see the way the action figure market's going, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, he does all right. I mean, they're. I mean, when no, I go, I that's what he sells at the conventions. Yeah, I'm saying like maybe maybe not from him, but you know, there is a good action uh, figure market. <laughs> so I was asking the uh, I was asking the uh, chat real quick, like you know, somebody said there was ten of us from Rhode Island there, you know, and uh, hey, right on. So I asked around, like, you know, what was your favorite band or memory or up, you know, upstate? So we got the guy from Flem who loved to see Autopsy. He doesn't remember if he was there or not, though. <laughs> <laughs> I remember and, Jeff. Uh, I remember Jeff being there from Vital Remains. Yeah, Jeff Gruslin back then. Yeah, yeah, it was like a melting pot of all kinds of freaks, you know. So I was. I, I, I got. I think I got the Vital Remains shirt from him that day. I was wearing it when we played. Then I switched to a Warm Pain later on. But uh, yeah, uh, that day I was wearing the excruciating pain uh, artwork. Sick. From them. Yeah, that was crazy shit. They do need a King bobblehead cling. <laughs> what Fraser? Right, look, there you go, man. It doesn't cost you nothing. There you go. So <laughs> check it out. I was gonna I have one that you pull the string and I don't shut up, but then it would never shut up. So you would have to smack it around, tell it to shut up. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it would shut up anyway. So <laughs> it would keep on trucking. <laughs> so yeah, King. What you know? I mean, of course, half of the show you were thrown out or blacked out. But beyond beyond that, what else do you you know? What else? What else memories you have? Because I have you know, like especially during the autopsy set, um, they were playing songs that were like newer. You know what I mean? Like right. in the grip of winter and um, the other whatever the other slow song was. You know what I mean? But yeah, well, I was, like I said, I was helping them out on drums. I was just making sure the drum set didn't fall apart for them. So I was actually behind the drum set off to the right. Um, mm -hmm. And that I actually have a nice picture. I don't have it in front of me or I'd show it to you. Uh, me just kind of like with the duct tape ready for something to go. And at the end, he just got up and he was like just sort of sick. You know, he's just kind of about to puke, you know, hot. Just, you know, that's how it is. I mean, just because I was a singing drummer too. Just that whole fucking thing. But, I mean, they were unbelievable. I mean, like, like I said, man, they – they that, that was the band that was really breaking out, you know, at the time, besides like a morbid angel or something, all topsy was coming up and they were really crunching underground for oh, me. Yeah. You know, I was never a morbid angel guy, but fucking all topsy. I fucking love. And man, I was just so psyched to fucking see them and meet Chris. Cause we're, you know, we're just fucking both just, you know, goofy as shit in our pen pal. And, and, like, yeah. Yeah. Like, like Alex said easy. earlier, man, it was like first time meeting your pen pal, you know? Yeah, you guys are like peas in a pod, so that's why. So it's it, like when you meet somebody like that, you're like you already fucking know them already, you know, which is it's so true. Cool. 
You but know, the whole day was good. Like I said, I, I, I got kicked out. I went on top of the roof. I was I was planning a way to sneak into the roof. Really, I didn't know what I was doing. We Literally, this girl I knew from going up to Annie's house, she was there. She's like, you know, let's go get some whiskey. Okay, so we go buy a, the biggest bottle they got. We're, I sneaking in through the gear. The guy sees me. He's like, you can't have that in here. You're fucking out of here. Is that your fucking girl? I was like, well, she's hanging out with me. She's gone, too. So we're outside. I'm like, we're fucking kicked out. So she's like, well, fuck you. Fuck off. You know, I'm trying to be cool and get back in. But I, I was like, you know what? She's right. Fuck you. So I went up on the roof. We just chugged for about an hour or two. And then I was like, man, I got to go see you. I can't miss autopsy. I'm starting to get past that point of no return. I'm like, I'm not going there today. So I got back in. I, I think I only missed like two bands. I'm trying to think of who it was. I know that played. It was like a little bit after we played. I give it a couple. And I, it was probably Cannibal. I don't remember seeing Cannibal Corpse. And I don't remember seeing... Um, did you Somebody get kicked else. out before or after you played? You got kicked oh, out oh, after. You played. After I, I, I okay. never, I never drink before we play. Ever, <laughs> I never, not, not one time ever did I ever do that. Ever, I never yeah, would. Yeah. I always had a thing that someone's paying to see you or you're part of something that costs money. You never fuck up. I learned that when yeah. I was twelve when I went to see Aerosmith and Stephen Tyler fell off the stage twice. I'm like, I'll never be this fucking much of an asshole. Fuck this mm. dude. You know, you pay yeah back what people... it was like twelve dollars in 1980, but I was like, no. But um, no, it was it was around the time Cannibal Corpse. I know they played a little later. It might have been Baphomet Cannibal Corpse through the, somewhere in that time. I don't. I ne- yeah, definitely did yeah. not. See, I did not see Cannibal Corpse. I know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I did. I but I did see Repulsion, and I saw Autopsy. Those were the two I was there to see the most. And I was and I was pleasantly surprised that Disharmonic Orchestra got to play too, because that was you the last to minute. See autopsy it, from behind the stage, though. So in a weird way, the stage. you know, you're like in a different scenario, you know. You yeah, know, it was. It was amazing. There. It's fucking amazing. Yeah. I thought it was cool that, uh, like you mentioned it at first, but I thought it was cool that you had your boy up on the stage and he was like your secondary drummer, like your air drummer. You know, <laughs> yeah, those guys were those guys were so hungover. If you really look at that and you studied it, which nobody needs to spend the time to do it, but they're just in a fucking trance. Like if that next song that was coming on that tape you played was "Haunted Cerebellum." He gets up and sings a little bit. And so does the guy that drank the whole thing of sugar. And then another guy from this side, it was actually Josh from Suffocation. Because we got in early with Suffocation as friends. Uh, we actually brought them to D.C. for one of their first out-of-state shows. We brought them down, and fucking, we were all like buddies and stuff. And um, it, it was just, that that whole time was just party, party, party. As soon as we finished, we were all over partying. I know Mark I know Mark walked off, met, some, I met a girl. I think Les met a girl that day. I mean, you know, we've just fried chicken, man. That's that's the word for it. We were just fucked up, man. But we loved yeah. every minute of it. That's what we, that's what we did then. You know, you did the same damn thing, man. We we fucking sure. we took ourselves as far as we could, but we didn't miss the show in the end, you know. Yeah, and we were the out of towners too, which is cool. Yeah, and I've got, I've got friends that I, they, they come to shows and they pass out. I'm like, they're like all day. I'm seeing them. Okay, like for example, deceased. Now we're in our 36th year of going on. So these guys like, man, I've been waiting years to see you guys. I can't wait. And then like two hours later, you know, you're like waiting for a couple opening bands to play and you see the guy and he's starting to tilt the can a lot. Right. And then by the time you play, you're looking, I'm looking for the guy like, yeah, I want to send a song out. This guy's been there all day for me. He he's, he's done. He's either passed out on the fucking floor or he's not even seeing the show. And then you get a fucking an email or a Facebook thing. And they're like, man, I fucked up, man. I drank too much. And I, I didn't even see you guys play. So it yeah. you know it, it happened to the best of us. Mark Mark and, and Patigo, man, he he used to do it a lot, man. He just be if he was up, he was out on his feet, man. You know, it it, it happens to all of us. I've been there myself, man. But it's I was like fucking... 50 is either I could get fucked up or I couldn't before the show. Because it's like it depended who I was going there with. So a lot of times it was like uh I could you know, there was if it was like local more to me, like Lamore. Or maybe streets, you know, or right. like my scene of North Jersey was like Studio One, uh, Obsessions, and sure. the Pipeline, the Pipeline in Newark. Those were like uh, the clubs that were near me. So uh, a lot of those shows, you know, we drank like crazy. You know what I mean? Was it was but Obsessions? Like a, Is that the one that had the full rug on it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it was like really? a, yeah, we a, played there with Mortician Randolph. on yeah. Supernatural Addiction Tour. We played there. That was a weird place. I remember Mark went outside, met a girl outside, and they went to the woods. And he came back, and between her and him, they were tracking dog shit through the whole entire fucking place. And the guy said, "Look at my fucking rug, man!" It was just dog shit everywhere, man. The whole place smelled like dog shit. That was yeah. Obsessions. I, I remember that place well. Yeah, big place big was- room, big room, right? 
Right. Yeah, the place was. It was like a weird anomaly because they would have, they would have weird good shows there. It was kind of in the middle of nowhere for us. Yes. Like for even yes. for me. But you know, not. I mean, you are used to going to G Willikers from like Virginia, so to you, it didn't probably two and a half. Up. Yeah, two and a half hour drive. Two and a half hour. Yeah. Drive. So most of the stuff, I you know, I got. I was fortunate with the spoon in my mouth, not really, but I lived in New Jersey, literally, where you could just take the path train and go right into Manhattan. It was like nine miles away or something. Yeah, that's killer. I mean, it took it took you an hour and a half to get into New York City, even though you were not yeah, miles away. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so it was it was cool to be able to hit both scenes. Like I would be able to do the New Jersey thing and the New York thing, and then like everybody that every fucking every fucking band wanted to play in New York, dude. It didn't matter who it was, and right. they all wanted to play in Manhattan it's because back then maybe Brooklyn wasn't really an option dude it was like a fucking yeah, war zone that was later you know on I mean? for sure yeah that came like later you know but uh it was cool to be able to like straddle up and down the friggin north jersey south jersey you know what i mean yeah it sounds like you, you made all the shows good for you man i know you die hard dude ever since yeah. i met you man you always were you kind of the same way too by you like maybe you would go to virginia shows but then you oh, go we never lower. missed anything do we 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 drive ten hours for a show if we had to if that was the only show they're playing like the first show Voivod's first show in America we we you know we were fucking I think I, yeah I was um seventeen I think I was yeah seventeen maybe almost eighteen and we were we were, we were kids we had I mean then we were all still under our mom's roofs and all that shit and our parents and uh, yeah. we saved money and saved and saved and we got our ass to the Ritz in New York that show and we didn't even have a healthy car to get there between all of us and we we packed in two cars and made it to that show anything we mm. used to go we drive 200 miles to see hollows eve in a church with five people you know what i'm saying or we yeah, drive yeah. Shit, I, man we'd be here all day just the shit we saw or trying to no, sneak I'm, into shows we weren't old enough to get into man same same i used to bring a fake friggin i would bring like get someone else's birth certificate just to get into streets dude <laughs> like, wow <laughs> So I must have been like 16 or something, or I was 15. Yeah. So like I had to, you had to be 16 to get in and there was no license for 16 year olds back then. You know what I mean? I mean, there might be now, I don't wow. know, but back then it wasn't. So it's like, yo, can you lend me my, <laughs> lend me your birth certificate so I could pretend that I'm you to get in. Cause you have ID or whatever or whatever, or like have to bring like one of my friends. I, yeah, I used to get my, from my mom. Family. I used to get my mom. We go to a place in DC to see shows. We get my mom to go down there and she would go see, we'd like, come on, mom, Queens Reich's playing or anthrax or Raven. And we'd be like, you gotta right. go, man. We were all like fucking 14, 15. And you had to be 21 so to go in with, but unless you had a parental adult. So my mom got like right. people I didn't even know. They're like, can you, can your mom say I'm her kid too? Sure. <laughs> get like five, 10 <laughs> oh. people in there. Twisted sister. We did, we did that many Many times for Twisted Sister. We were literally 14, 15 years old, man. That's so awesome, dude. That's fucking awesome. Your mom rules, bro. So if somebody's asking a question, what's up? And that's why we're still here, man. It's it's what we do, brother, between you and me. Exactly. We're still loving what we do. Like you said, you love when you sent me the message earlier telling me how much you love metal, dude. I still love it too, man. I don't give a fuck what year it is and what's cool and what's not. I don't give a fuck. Exactly. We just do what we do and just keep on doing it, man. This is how I do it. I mean, I this see is Fraser down there. Style. What's up with October 31? I yeah, see Fraser. Fraser, I'm coming to Texas in f- uh, four weeks from Friday. I'll be there 18th, 19th, and 20th. We're in um, we're in San Antonio on the 18th. We are in Austin on the 19th, and we're in Houston, which I know I'll see Fraser at on the 20th. October 31 is uh, we just played our first show in like a couple years uh, back. Um, we're working on a record called Ye Old Peril. And uh, we're going to keep on doing that thing, too, Frazier. But I'll see you in a couple of weeks, buddy. Yeah, roll out the red carpet, Frazier. Friggin' King Fowley is coming. The king is coming to town. <laughs> he's bringing his family. He's bringing his son. He's bringing his grandchildren. So be be ready, dude. Be fucking be ready. ready, bro. Yeah. Should, you know, take the man out on town. Get him the nicest five-star hotel. Hook it there up. There you go. <laughs> you know what and he'll sign your cds bro so you'll be good so be- at least an, yeah, at least something of water with ice in it it'll I'll be, be happy completely with that. yeah it'll be completely awesome so awesome dude somebody saying can't wait to see you yeah that's fraser somebody was yeah, i love fraser i heard francisco was on there too and you know we'll see him 
Yeah, obs obsession was in the boonies and CBGBs. Yeah, it was the shit. That's right. Lamar we played CBGBs was so many times. We were one of the last bands to ever play CBGBs. They were just about to yeah. take it down. Mike's, our guitar player, Mike's last show was there. We played over two hours. We did a gig there. I think it was us. Cy played. Um, I don't know. Did Nunslaughter play there too that night? I can't remember. We, we had a crazy show at CBGBs that night. It was definitely us and Cy. I don't know if Nunslaughter played that one, but I think they did. And Lamar sorry, was Boris, great. I didn't recognize you earlier. So this is Boris. Um, Boris, yeah, Lamore was in the hood. You couldn't leave with your car stereo if you went to that show, basically. That was like the trade off for going to the, the Lamore show, your car stereo. Yeah, you <laughs> I, I only personally, I only went to Lamore's once. I saw Voivod there one time. I never got there that much. I remember listening to their fucking. Um, their answer machine, all those shows are like, here's loudness, man of war, sex. And it was like every night, Anvil, fucking, you know, the plasmatics, whatever. Every night. I'm like, I just see the move fucking there, man. This is this yeah, is for like me, 80, 82. Yeah, for me, obviously a little older, push it down the line a little bit. It was like right. okay, yeah, agnostic front, Cro-Mags, you know, carnivore. Right. You know what I mean? Then slowly but surely it's like, all right, now we're gonna, you know, we're doing you know, I seen Slayer there, which was amazing. You know, then it was like, okay, now we're gonna fucking we're gonna fuck with death metal now. So it's like obituary, sepultura, fucking carcass. You know what I mean? Right, right. It was a it was a good spot, man. But then sometimes, you know, we wouldn't just go to see the carcass show. We would go and go on the fucking Chromax night again, dude, or Biohazard, or you know what I mean? Just something to fucking do. You typo you just negative. Go out and have fun. Something over the top. Yeah, there was multiple like carnivore reunion shows and shit, and that, that they were great, dude. And they were the right. people that would go to those clubs were fucking oh, completely violent, extreme fucking like, right dude. So like, if I would go there, it was like, yeah, that was the night. I was like, yeah, I don't think I'm gonna dance tonight because I don't want to get fucking go out of here on a stretcher, basically. You know? <laughs> did, you, did you ever go to the Ritz? Yeah, sure. I saw um, SOD. The Ritz was good. There, I saw uh, craziest shit, craziest bit I've ever seen in all my days was at the Bad Brains. I, I saw the Bad cool... Brains at the Ritz, and I've never. Oh wow! Go ahead. Wow, damn! At the Ritz, that's crazy. Bad, yeah, the I'm... Bad Brains. We went there. We spent the night. Me, me, and my buddy took a bus from DC up there, and we saw the Bad Brains. And I've never seen a crazier pit. We went on a Friday, and the show was on a Sunday. And we fucking stayed two days out in the fucking, in the elements. It was fucking ice cold. I remember we fucking went to an all day porno theater and tried to sleep in there. And all the hookers just kept fucking like knocking you on the head. Hey, eight bucks, man. Eight bucks, you know, two for 10, right. blah, blah, blah. But anyway, like by the, by the third day, man, I was out, I was out on my feet from trying to like, you know, rest. And as soon as the bad brain started, man, it was just insanity at the Ritz. And Ritz had that huge, huge yeah, floor, you know? Big. Definitely. They were coming off awesome the balconies stage. off the PA. Yeah, people jumping off the Fun fucking times, PA man. and shit. Fucking maniacs. Dude. Yeah, it was like, I think it was Bad Brains, Leeway. I think um, Cro Mags played too, I think, that night. It was just all those, you know, the whole fucking, the whole scene. Yeah, yeah you had zone like your too. Killing Time, War Zone, like all those good bands. Yeah, yeah I, I never got to see, uh, I don't I think I've ever got to see uh, Bad Brains. I wish. I love the Bad Brains, you know? When I will, oh, we back, man, when they used to, I mean, they're, you know, they're from DC. We used to have a club hmm. called the nine 30. There's a new one now, but this is the old one. We were, they were, we were sitting there passing bowls of hash back and forth while they were playing. We were giving it to them. And, they, and he, I remember HR comes over and he goes, Hey man, remember there's a lot of fucking narcs out there tonight. And we're just passing bowls back and forth of hash. That was like night. That was like the eye against die tour. Like I guess late 86, early 87 for that Damn. one. Yeah. We, we Damn. seen them so many times. I actually, even before I even knew who they were, I saw them on at the um at the mall, the Fourth of July thing, back when I had Rock Against Reagan. I remember them playing. I didn't even know who they were. I was like, look at these black guys, crazy as shit. And this was like mm. 1980 fucking two or 83, and I didn't even really know them that well at the time. I didn't, you know, I was getting into my punk rock more so, and I was like, these guys are crazy. It was like them, DRI played there before. I think it was like Reagan Youth, um, Dead Kennedys, just just all that era stuff. MDC, yeah. you know. But you know all those speed bands, which I love all that stuff. Because I'm a you were traveling right for that, so you were traveling for that too, though. Because that wasn't in Virginia. Was that a far? It was in DC. It was. It was just. It was in DC. It was in DC at the monument. About how they far? Did it every year. How far? Yeah. How far? Oh, travel was, was like 
nine. Oh, that was nothing, man. You. That from nothing? my house, that was fifteen minutes. Oh wow! Well, I was awesome. I, I lived in Arlington, which is basically the basically the second town before DC. Then you basically have Roslyn, Roslyn, Clarendon, which is kind of the same thing. And then you're immediately you're in Arlington, like the mm-hmm. Arlington Cemetery and all that's right there. You could see the you could see the monument from the Arlington Cemetery. You know, so it was easy to get to. We went all the time because it was like it was the one day you could smoke weed legally and all this shit. Mm. Madonna owned the rights of Bad Brain's name. For she a did. Lot of years. Yeah, Derek's right. He, yeah, that was crazy shit. That's weird. Weird as shit. Yeah. And then, then when they Michael could get Jackson it back, shit. when they could get it back, HR didn't want to use the name. He thought it was fucking negative, so he didn't want to call it the Bad Brains anymore. So he was cool. With yeah, the yeah. That's some Michael Jackson shit. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> I don't it understand, is. you know, but it is what it right. is. It's Madonna, you know. She's <laughs> a super dick, you know. Yes, All right, absolutely. Let's, let's let's play something here. This is uh, let's see what I haven't played. Yeah, let's. I'm gonna move into the clip a little bit. It's gonna start from the front though a little bit. Let's see if I could catch up to that part you were saying. Right around. What do we do? Two songs of this? Yeah, I think there's three, and then it goes to Gorophobia. Yeah, that's the ending right there, Haunted Cerebellum. This is one of my favorite songs, dude. This yeah, we still play that one, the Yeah, it's Haunted Cerebellum. We still play it. There's Al. Al drove up. That's the guy with the long hair there. And hit me. Yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> boy. There's That's Josh. Chuck? Chuck's sitting down still. He's fried out, man. Uh, that was Josh. Close, close to my cup of cake. Thank you. Thank you very much. The CS Metal. The C's were always on Virginia, but also the Sky Room. Yeah, that was fun, man. It was, it was still new to us, Roy. We played a few out of state shows, we hadn't played a lot. At that point, yeah, the crowd was good, man. The crowd was into it. We didn't play this before, so we'll, we'll give this some love too. Shout out no, to go Alex. Ahead, this. Here you go, Alex. We got there 20 minutes you before this. Malowski. Yeah, John. Oh, Craig, Craig on drums. Is that John on guitar? Yeah, John Arcucci. Cooch. watching the show on the side of the mid side of the stage. <laughs> yeah, I see him. Lost the mustache. So was this show back backline? Everything was backline? Yeah, it was all cannibal quotes this year if I remember right. Frank from the K on the side there.
see Ronnie Dio there too, next to Ross, actually. Yeah, I do. Campation. Taller than anyone there, but he's fucking like 15 or 16 years old. <laughs> I think I had just been turned 18 at this stage. Was if you don't mind me yet, if you don't mind me asking, about it, how old were you when the show was? I was no, I was 22. I'm 53 now. 22. Gotcha. So what are you, 51? How old are you? No, I'm 49. I just turned 49. 49. Oh, I get you. 18. good about this king too for me yeah like i was a fan so like this is the first time i saw agoraphobia play like up on a bigger stage and it was the same for right. deceased too so it felt like yeah no yeah made it. like everybody made it <laughs> yeah we were i mean it was still new to us at the big stages and stuff like i said michigan death festival was our first it was our second festival and yeah. you know, other than that we played we played a bunch of shows in pittsburgh with bands like dream death and you know, chaotic plague and hideous mangalas and things like that. That was what we did. Did Safari Club have a pretty big stage show? Or am I thinking of another place? No, no, it was all right, but it wasn't like this. It was. They didn't have hardly anything to it. Small. We yeah. did that. We, you know, we were local heroes by now. We could pack those places locally, and we were just branching out. And you know, we were starting to play out of state and uh, up in New York. We played Rock Palace, with Primeval, things like that. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Cheers, Rock Palace, you know, you're playing G Willikers, playing Pittsburgh scene. Yeah, we played Electric Banana like four times in yeah, like a month. <laughs> Brutal. They had a good, uh, you can get a good soundboard there. Did you ever catch one of those? Oh, yeah. We got some great yeah. deceased. Our first out of state show, we have a soundboard. We played 70 minutes. We played almost a whole hour and a half. It was, wow. uh, it was supposed to be us, Dream Death, and Revelation. So it was kind of like doom metal bands with us, but Dream Death played Revelation in play. So we got to play longer. Great soundboard there. You're right. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of live tape from back there. Like a banana. Hell yeah. This is a decent crowd at this. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> we got sick new clothes to play tonight. We truly love them. It's going to be great to have them too. I'd like to say hello to Mitch, Mary, Prime Mabel, and Parsons, who can Armageddon, Suffocation, 
All the peeps. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> All the peeps. That was the crew right there. Or oh, the crew. There's the John Barrick camera effects. Yeah, he loves them. So bugged out, this the internet, it, like some things were just saw, right? Like they didn't, you know what I mean? Like this right. actually got captured on film. Because a lot of my memories aren't on film, obviously. There's no pictures. Right. Because if you're like me, we were partying, so we didn't bust cameras out. Yeah, right. <laughs> Yeah, I saw agoraphobia this day. I remember seeing that. I was still in the room here. Yes, I did love playing the bowling alley, to be honest, in the Jam and Skate. I remember the show at the Jam and the Skate. It was uh, the scenes, primeval, immolation, and um, I think it was Dripping Corpse, too. And um, Andy from Primeval cussed, and they fucking kicked him off the stage because they weren't allowed to curse. Kick wow. fucking prime evil. Like he said, hey, we're fucking prime evil. And they kicked him right off the fucking stage. <laughs> Meanwhile, you can't even hear it. Price of traffic. They're tight. They're good. We got there 20 minutes beforehand, he said. Ready to go. Somebody was saying that, uh... They're talking about deceased, deceased. Show oh, yeah. I like the banana. Absolutely, Laura. That's that. That's the one I was just telling Roy about. That damn electric like, I knew how to tape it's a show. minutes TV. Cheers. Oh, just, just you guys? It was, yeah, it was a return to the evil side. It was a demo and uh, live show. Chaotic flag. Love them. Redneck repellent. <laughs> Cheers. Right on. Thanks. It's a fun show, up, man. Let's, Let's go. go. Soundboard. I listen to those soundboards from time to time. You know what? I was way more into seeing bands live than I was even listening to their games or albums and stuff. That's why right. I was just like, just go to show, to show, to show. You know what I mean? Like a, ju like yeah, a junkie. No, absolutely. Almost. Like a junkie. <laughs> I just had a replacement that was like metal. Which is awesome, you know? Absolutely. I mean, you couldn't have a better replacement, you know what I mean? Because like... You know, like, dr obviously, you know, people dabble in drugs. That's one thing. You do that when you're younger, you know? But, like, if you uh, fucking, you know, stay into it, you fucking your whole life up. You know what I mean? But uh, I felt like. Yeah, you know mine. You read metal, my book. You know me. I was out. 19, yeah, I was being, done, man. Being in the whole, like, metal scene and music scenes and, me you know, death metal scenes and everything music-wise, like, that kept me out of trouble in a way. Because, yeah, like, that's, even that though, was your high, dude. That was what you needed. You needed just needed that. Yeah, it was a good time, man, too. Like, I could have a good time and I, I wouldn't have to spend any money, just enough to get in. You know what I mean? Right. If I did want to drink, I would drink, like, before the show. You know what I mean? Because I wasn't. Yeah. I you know what, King? I threw shows. I've been to like thousands of shows. I could count on both hands, maybe twice, how many times I actually bought a drink at a show, basically. Right. Maybe only 20 times. You know what I mean? Yeah, like same I, with me. Yeah, I just really wasn't into there to go into the show to drink because I was just like, I'm here for the fucking entertainment. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. So it's just so bugged out. So, yeah, we did this show, too, because today it was the day of death. And it would would have been going on right now, 31 fucking years ago, dude. Sure would. So bugged out. 
So having all this uh, footage, video wise and audio wise, is just so dope. I mean, it's nice to have King on here. He could share some of his experiences um, um, of you know sneaking liquor in, and then uh, <laughs> what, what was the, what was the bigger story about you getting you you guys almost fell off a cliff? <laughs> now that and wasn't then, uh, that wasn't the that wasn't the day of death. That was the next oh, time okay. I went to the Sky Room. It was a it okay. was a snowstorm, and we had heard, oh, you got to go up the fucking Allegheny Mountains or whatever the fuck mountains it was. And I was like, really? We're going to go through the fucking mountains? There's like ice everywhere. And they're like, yeah, yeah, it's not going to be that bad. And we got to the top and like I saw this ski lift and it said you were basically a mile in the air and there was no railing up there for the cars. You literally go off the shit. Like I said, Roadrunner, Wally Coyote shit. And yeah. the van just started to creep. It was a fucking, it was a um, cargo van. It was no seats in it. Everybody was just laying there wilding around. And then that back started to go. And I remember pulling it with all my might. And almost felt everybody like everybody what? My pinky everybody off. went to the back. Like everybody goes to no, the back they, of the van. Every, by the time this was going on, almost everybody was asleep. And then when I when they we woke up, what's going on? They got up, jumped up, and I'm like, dude, you're gonna shake the fucking thing over the top. So I told them all get out the passenger side. That included me. We all got out the passenger side van, and, uh, and then we stood there and the fucking we're like, what are we gonna do? It was like literally two o'clock in the morning, and this fucking we finally heard this light coming, and we were like, what is this? Some kind of like. A, a snow patrol guy but it was just some tow truck guy looking for people stuck up there and he got 150 mm. this is this is uh this is still this is 19 uh that was november i would say this was probably december or early right. of the next year yeah no i think it was the next month we went back to the sky room and the fucking it i mean you know I how bad had, it can snow up i think way. i had the flyer this was the show december 16th. yeah when was it yep that's it that was the show Abominati. I need you to I need you to send me a copy of that on something when you get you know Facebook message yeah, me yeah. or something that that flyer. I don't think I have that one on file. But yeah, I, yeah, I, I remember. And I can remember Abominog. apparition. Yeah, Abominog play. Abominog. We got them on the thing, and uh, apparition played. I love those guys. Brett and all, those guys were friends. Suffocation again. Gorophobia. I, I just remembered all them. Nocturnal, which was Tom, who was from Savage Death, one of the fucking real originators of U.S. death metal, uh, was definitely Savage Death. You know that. Morpheus, which turned on to be Morpheus Descends. And then Beyond Death had Jack Owens, who went on to be in um, Cannibal Corpse. Maelstrom, I remember, too. I think they were from New York. And right. uh, I just remember it was literally the bands playing to each other. It was so fucked up. And a few locals got there. I remember we met some girls, and we ended up hanging with them for like two days. I remember meeting some girl named Barb there. And then uh, she laughed. She's like, oh, I'll get in touch with you. And I, then all of a sudden, I, one day I was looking through Fangora. They used to have the back where they'd have like pen pal notes. And it was like King Fowley here. I remember me, Barb from Buffalo. And I was like, look, there she <laughs> found me in Fangora magazine of all places. But uh, yeah, we made it there. I remember we made it there and we played as a, we played as a three piece. It was me, Mark and Les because Doug, Doug was leaving the band. And so we just right. played with one guitar. And um, one of those tracks is on the gut wrench seven inch. If you go looking, I think oh, it's, I think it's oh. gut wrench live. It is gut wrench live. It's from our gut wrench seven inch. The first thing yeah. we put out on relapse. A lot of good, from that a show. lot of good soundboards came from uh, Sky, uh, whatever the, that. Club. Yeah, it was good too. You're right, absolutely. So and the other track, and the other track from that seven inch that's live came from that JC Dobbs show, which was which was Mike from the C second show when he took Doug's place. That was the one that we were talking about earlier, where the party broke out at Annie's later that night. Yeah, yeah. Was his first show at? It was after the bloodshed from that. Was his that first was a JC Dobbs. Yeah, I went to that no, show. His first, his, yeah, his his first show was um, a local party thing in Virginia. And then it was a Friday. And the next week, I think it was Saturday, we played that G. Willikers thing. I think that yeah. might have, I mean, I'm sorry, the J.C. Dobbs thing. Because I know we went to Annie's on a Friday. And we spent the night and we partied. And the next day, we were like, it was a matinee. And we were like, man, we're fucking hungover. And I remember Mark was so fucked up, he could barely play. Because he was doing, I was just drinking, but he was doing hard-ass drugs then. And, um. That afternoon we played and everybody played and we went back to Annie's and that's when that fucking crazy night with the jumping down the stairs and head first and the her her Freaking bear night. slippers she gave me whatever that the fuck all that shit at happened. like nine that night started instead of it's that shit happening at two two o'clock in the morning it was happening at nine o'clock at night it was it was <laughs> so nuts. I mean, just we were kept crazy. going yeah I saw it was uh, up there man I mean I saw her on a on a podcast with John McAtee and they were talking about that just. Yeah, we came up there. We 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 were completely out of hand. I won't deny that for a goddamn second, man. <laughs> I hear you. I, I'm I'm a witness, dude. So I know. Yeah, you were there. Damien was there earlier. 
it, all his hair fell out that day. He's never had it since. <laughs> yeah, your friend was so funny, dude, because I remember, like, I remember you coming down the stairs once or twice, but your friend just kept going over and over. Oh, and yeah, over he was, again. like, trying to shoot was... the camera. He was trying to get the commercial, the Abominox 7-inch. That was Chuck, right? And and John's like, no, nah, no, nah, I didn't get your head first. Do it again. 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 He's like, okay, 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 okay. And the next yeah, thing you know, yeah. he's been done, I think, 30 times. And, when, when, and if people that are listening to this, I mean, it wasn't just like three stairs. This was a full-on fucking stairs in somebody's fucking house where we just fucking took off leaping. We didn't just put our heads down and slide on our bellies. We jumped and fell on our bellies. I, I felt like we broke our rib cages. I know I felt like I broke mine and just bottled on down to the end and hit the wall and crashed yeah. and burned. You're using man. it like a goddamn <laughs> slide, like a slip and slide almost. It was, it was nuts. All stare. <laughs> that's yeah, what that's you do. Right. That's what you do there. Somebody was saw morbid angel and carcass in the sky room. Yeah. You went to those, Sam? Crazy. Hideous Mangalus gets around too. Well, there's Sam. Hey, Sam, Sam. Banner man, Tony Tapestry man, Tori is saying, Hail to the king! Hey, cheers! Yep, Bye. we brought our own, exactly. I brought my own too. <laughs> Wait, here's a, here's a legitimate question, okay? Sure, this is for the day of death, I'm sure. How was what I remember that it was, da- what I remember was, it was damn good. I remember all the time. I hit the drums as hard as I fucking possibly can all the time. So a lot of times back then being the singer, when I would sing, my voice would would be like trapped in my head to begin with. And then I hit the cymbals and the cymbals would rattle. So if they didn't have that that drum monitor blast and to, I liked it on my left ear, which was where my hi-hat was because I don't cross when I play. I just remember it being fantastic. I could hear both guitars. I could hear the backup vocals, the, even the bass parts, you know. A lot of times back then it was weird because I – we started a song and, they, and I couldn't hear the guitar in the riff uh, to start the song. I'd, I'd be like, where the fuck is what's going on? Because I'm using that as a cue to come in. So after about a year or two of doing that early days, you learn out there like, hey, just turn towards me. And if I can or can't hear you, I'll at least see you play it. So at that show, no problems at all. It was a, it was a good mix. Sound guy was good. I thought all the bands sounded good. I mean, listen to those videos you just heard. I know. That was pretty well mixed. That's the video. I think our only problem we, <laughs> yeah. I think our only problem that day was um, Les's bass. That that flying V bass I was talking about that uh, Dave Vincent wants so bad, the pickups were awful. So when he would do a part, it would literally just, you couldn't even hear it. It would just be so like the action was so bad on it. It was just, it wouldn't. It wouldn't break through the, the mix. I mean, hearing some of that mortician and stuff you were playing with those crazy bass, you know, down tune. That was another thing about us, too. We didn't really do all that. Yeah. Death Metal Gym. Oh, yeah, you were there. The Dio thing. We ain't been back to MDF. They ain't asked us back since, man. I don't know what happened there. But we had a blast. It was a hell of a show. Played right after Autopsy on the indoor stage, man. That was like 2000 hmm. fucking... Oh, that's 12, yeah, 11, one of the like last. That. Probably tell me. I, I went to that one and then I went to one more and that was it for me for uh, MDF. Yeah, I, w- I was actually supposed to sing that day. Um, I think we were going to do Stargazer with I was supposed to do that with Incantation because they did a Dio tribute too. We just couldn't get together in time. Um, a couple of our friends were coming out from out of state and we had to meet them. I was going to actually sing that with um, Incantation at MDF too. But yeah, we learned stand up and shout the night before in honor of Dio had passed away right around that time. Good time. Mm-hmm. So. Maybe one day we'll be back, brother. <laughs> I gotta. I want to play this. Um, I'm gonna try to do a screen sharing here. You, there's a part on here I might try to find. So bear with me, people, too, sure. because basically King is like you were like the master of stage presence at this show. This is from the Day of Death too. So check this out. I'll play. I'll play a little bit of the beginning, and then we'll 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 find. Yeah, that's we'll find fine. Out. We'll find the God King after that. Check this out. I'll play, I'll play a little bit of the beginning, and then we'll 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 find. Yeah, that's we'll find fine. God. We'll find the God King whoa, whoa. after that. Check. Whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> that ain't the one. <laughs> that was wild. That was a that was a time warp. It was a time warp. <laughs> it just keeps going. It's like a loop. We're spinning, man. We're in the Voivod zone. Yeah, that was a weird time warp. <laughs> that was weird. All right, hold on. Let me try again here. I'm spin. I'm spin. <laughs> I'm spinning, dude. Hold on a second. Let's try this. I'm I'm an amateur at this bullshit. Sorry, you're doing a great job. Yeah, 
This next one's a new song. It's called In the Grip of Winter. What, uh, that's the bulging right there. Huh? Yeah. Aaron's worn a deceit shirt. That's Michigan Death right there. My kid. This was like a compilation that was on some glorious times page that turned into like a virus now or whatever. Okay. So for some reason I was like able to suck it out the fucking video of it, you know what I mean? That's cool. Really interesting uh like the crowd of the hard. Chris Lifer rocking those mounted toms. Incantation. Can you hear that too? Watch. Wait, man, you're excited when you're great. <laughs> That's incantation. Oh, 
Michigan, yes, Michigan Death Fest where that happened. They interviewed all the bands. They interviewed me, man, and put them in their place, but they never played it on the news later. They didn't like what I said. I was just saying how it was, we were just playing music, man, leave us alone. And they were saying we were all Satanists and shit, and I was telling them Satan was too slow for me. And I was talking about how Max von Sydow was such a big actor, and he was in The Exorcist. And, you know, he was just an acting role for him, and lyrics are lyrics, and, you know, let us be. And they ended up, ended up using stuff like where people were like, oh, we fucking, you know, got up the ass and shit like that. And <laughs> they wanted to prove their point. But that was absolutely the show, the big protest thing, man. A lot of that footage yeah. is still on YouTube, too. Sacrificing chicken. Love it. You remember that, Sam? It was fantastic. I was like, nah, I'm here to see fucking hideous mangoes. I don't give a fuck who else is playing. Del Vernon, man. Gutter ball metal. That's what I called it. Gutter ball metal. It was in a fucking metal uh, bowling alley area. <laughs> fucking really brutal. Steel City, right? Near Steel City. Steel City. Yeah, it was Steel City, all right. I stole a Miss Pac-Man from the hotel that night. For that <laughs> right around that time. <laughs> it, was Steel, it really was Steel City, wasn't it, Sam? Yeah, there you go. I did. I took a Miss Pac-Man sit-down two-player. I threw it out of the second-story hotel window, man. Got it out of there and told the guys to take it home in the van. <laughs> yes, there How is. Those news that? clips are fucking insane. How heavy was it? It wasn't that heavy. It, wow. it landed. It didn't break. Glass didn't crack nothing. It was, I don't know, maybe 50 pounds. I don't know. I think I heard it didn't seem like it didn't seem that heavy. I was imagining that the thing weighed like hundreds of pounds. That's how they it was. It was a sit. It was a sit down one, so you can kind of lift it like this. Yeah, yeah. But it was on the second floor. I just opened the window on the second floor. It was in the snack bar room of the fucking floor, and you could like play arcade in there. And I was like, I'm taking this. I took a microwave too. Threw it out there too. Taking this. (laughs) I'm taking this. I'm taking this. Because all a lot of the Pittsburgh people are very relaxed, laid back, and I know that my actions and the deceased guys are way over the top. Like with you know, with working with like Takeda or like um, Idiot's Manglis or any of those bands, like even Green Death or Doom Watch, those bands from up there, Chaotic Leg guys, they were like, these motherfuckers are crazy, man. <laughs> yeah, we were we're looking at you. We were. Like, I, ain't gonna, I ain't gonna lie. We were. They're like that. That tablecloth over that Pac-Man machine is not hiding the fact that you guys are stealing that shit. <laughs> taking it. I gotta have this, man. He's like, oh, I need this Pac-Man machine to come with the admission of the freaking hotel. And it never, it was, you know, for no security cameras back then. Exactly. Yeah, you could. Yeah, I don't think you could pull that one off today. No. Who knows? Though? Yeah, you Who never knows? know. Speed. Got a t- speed metal. <laughs> <laughs> I was, um, we did another show in Virginia with Corpus Rodas guys, and they wanted to take a cigarette machine. So we rolled it down the whole entire hotel floor. Well, the quarters kept, you know, it was, it was like in the middle of the night, and all the quarters were rolling because it was a cigarette machine, and we just kept rolling it, rolling it. We got it outside, and we're like, it was a stairwell there, and we couldn't get it up the stairs. I'm like, Fuck this cigarette machine. We actually would have got away with it. If we, if we got outside to the grass, we'd have had it. But we couldn't. It was so heavy, we couldn't bring it up. 
up, up over the fucking stairs. And we were big boys. It was just yeah, insanely yeah. heavy. We, we were so heavy we couldn't carry it. We had to roll it through the rug. And it just kept making every quarter, every every turn, time we rolled it. Over and over. Nobody came out and said nothing. <laughs> fucking, let's steal the cigarette machine. Yeah, I don't even smoke. <laughs> <laughs> you guys uh, stole anything that wasn't fucking tied down. We I did. We, correctly. We, yeah, we had fucking glue on our fingertips. <laughs> Let's see if we can find this. That's not you, right? Yeah, it's us. I remember being in a hotel and I think immolation and revenant and someone runs in the room and says, King is stealing the Pac-Man machine. <laughs> you know why I stole the Pac-Man machine, Sharon? Because they didn't have a Gorf machine. <laughs> I, I was a Gorf guy. Frogger would have we been all nice. left because we thought the cops would be on their way. <laughs> yeah, they now nah, they're still they're still looking for it to this day. Thirty fucking years ago. This is haunted cerebellum. It's the in-between song talking that really struck me, King. Just to this, be this is the last song of the set here. Here, let me turn it up anyway. out to Alan Moses today just to see if I could get him on here and uh, I had no luck to so I don't know 
Yeah, I don't know either. I, I was wondering what Alan Moses was up to. I haven't talked to him in about five, six, seven years myself. I did. Uh, I talked to the guy who was the um, Joe, and he was uh, he was the guy who worked on um, Mosh Central. And then okay. Brian had the chainsaw abortions. Uh, right. So I talked to the Mosh Central dude basically today, but he couldn't. Uh, he had to work or whatever. He had a double shift because. Right. But it would have been cool just to, you know, because he was really at the root of. Uh, that's why I asked who booked you, too, because I wasn't sure if it's him, maybe, you know. Here was the old uh, cover, too, of uh, Brian Zine. Yep. And I see Dirkata in there, too. There you go. Carbonized, sacrifice, fuck yes, dude. Yeah, these guys were doing some next level shit. Love the old death metal artwork. I know, me too, dude. So fucking awesome, man. I guess that was a, a Repulsion song. That was the uh, later on song, right? Yeah. The newer. All right, thank you. Okay, this next song. It's the title track of our album. <laughs> Listen to the crowd. Oh my god! <laughs> What's up, John? What's up? We're just hanging out listening to Autopsy. <laughs> hey, John, John. Hey, brother.
You know what's bugged out? That that song is not on the soundboard tape that I have too, it, which is cool though. But so that's its own fucking entity, you know. So what's up, John? We got John from Incantation who joined us here <laughs> for our Day of Death, uh, thirty-one years later, fucking uh, live stream. What's yeah, up, John? Sure. How's it? How's it hanging? It's going okay. It's all good. Um, yeah, sorry, I was gonna come a little earlier, but I had another episode of the Rock Fantasy Files thing, so yeah, yeah, you had a prior engagement, it's no problem, yeah. Brother. But if I had a few minutes, I could stop by, you know, chat a little bit. But yeah, I thought it would be good. cool. Try to talk to some of the bands that played and then, um, get them on here, man. Talk about their memories from the, the day of death, you know. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know what you guys already talked about, so I don't want to. Repeat some of those stories. I know Bill Better gets annoyed at my story about the pants thing, and I won't. Yeah, I mean, we didn't talk about that, but you know, we talked about some of the traveling there, maybe, and um, you know, just little little things, nothing big. Just uh, you know, King talking about uh, some of the deceased stuff. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the set, the sound. Yeah, yeah. We and also we were talking about how. Um, with uh, Gorephobia playing that you had uh, with Incantation, you had like, you know, Incantation like kind of hopped on, you know what I mean? Yeah, totally. Yeah, we weren't scheduled to play the show. Um, yeah, it was basically like Gorephobia needed a ride up there, so we gave him a ride up there and I said, well, hook us up, you know, let's play a couple songs. <laughs> and it ended up working out that they didn't really have a full set to play. And we didn't really have a full set to play. And I was going to be there anyway with Morticia, and I was playing guitar for him. So, you know, I thought that was fair deal. You know, just bring you guys up there. It was a big deal for us, super big deal to play, you know, that fest and, um, you know, to be a part of it. Because I remember we were trying to get on it within camp, but. The uh, that dude from Bathory who put put it on with Brian, they just um, they just kind of stonewalled us from playing it. They just weren't interested mm. in having us. So uh, it was actually the Bathory dude that didn't want us on. So it's kind of cool to be able to play it anyway, even though you know one of the people <laughs> putting it on didn't want us didn't want us playing. You know, but, but and then you guys played too. It was kind of I li was listening to the setback a little bit, and you guys just played like. You played one song and then you just played another one and you just played another we one just, afterwards. We, yeah, we just ran, ran through it as soon as possible. I mean, as quickly as possible. Yeah, I mean, we did it with just one guitar player, you know, at that show. That was like the first show when uh, Bill was in the band. It's, that was the first show that he he, did, he wasn't in. So he just did it as a four piece for the show. But for us, it was like we were just happy to play. So I was like, screw it, you know, we, we do it as, you know, a, the four piece, you know, that's four piece with Will singing, you know, or whatever. Yeah, so and we had this guitar. too that I had showed. So check this out. Oh yeah, Craig. So yeah. Craig was there. Craig was watching. <laughs> yeah, Craig was watching <laughs> us at the time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, Craig, Craig and the Future Fact guys, because he was playing Future Fact, I'm pretty sure back then. And uh, yeah, we were good friends with all those guys, so it was great to um, you know see them up there. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I remember meeting. I was mentioning on this. I met, I remember meeting Eddie Ortiz from Cattle Press in the line to go into the show, basically. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I've been friends with him ever since, dude, which is so amazing, you know? Yeah, there, it was, it was a, you know, for all the like the real underground dudes at that time, that was the probably the best fest to go to for like, you know, say, our generation of you know death metal you know at that time yeah. it was a big deal i mean i was definitely going to go even if i didn't play with mortician i would have definitely went to the show for sure i mean you have autopsy repulsion you know what's the cease of a million dude. bands playing i mean it was just like it was all quality you know it was like yeah could i don't even know if there could be like a, that death fest now with that quality of band you know and it's also like, with this right here check the price Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's just impossible. <laughs> you can't even have that for a show for one of those bands playing. <laughs> right, twelve bucks. Yeah, that's just that's just that's that's out of control. Yeah. What's up, Tim? How's it going, brother? Oh, it's Tim. Hey, what's up, Tim? Um, yeah. So, um, but yeah, it was great. I mean. I, I mean, it was great to play that show with, um, 
you know, mortician too. I mean, I was super, super psyched to do that. I mean, you know, it was just, it was just a really fun, a fun experience for me, you know, to get, to get the play. I mean, to, well, first of all, the play with mortician was a great experience because it was a totally like, you know, opposite side of the spectrum of what I was doing in Revenant or what I was doing with Incantation. So it was like, it was nice to just do something totally different and just like super primitive and heavy as fuck. And, you know, I'm pretty proud of the stuff that I did with them because we were doing stuff that not a lot of bands in the U.S. were really doing at that time. I mean, we, you know, we were really, you know, Oh, it wasn't really us. It was really Will and uh, Matt Sitch were, were really influenced, say, like by, you know, Slaughter and obviously like uh, Napalm Death and those kind of bands and stuff. Just like a, it, but it was just great for me to like bring everything down to just some bare bones and play. And, you know, um, it's great to, uh, you know, I mean, the compliments we got for playing that show and kind of like how it really boosted up Mortician's career at that time was just a, uh, Great thing. I mean, I even think that was when, um, you know, Relapse Records even got interested in Mortician at that show. I know it was for Incan too, but huh. it was, it was great. Um, you know, I did hear in the, in, in the crowd, uh, when, when King, when you were talking to the crowd, um, you mentioned in your announcement that, uh, you were, your record was going to be on Relapse Records. So it sounds like at the ready. show, at no, no, that for King actually. Oh, uh, well, you know, I think though, if I, if I remember Mortician already was working with um, Relapse Records before that. Because I remember actually, it might have been before that show or another show, Matt Sitcher showed me the flyer for Relapse because he knew that we were having problems with Seraphic Decay Records and we were looking for another label to put it out. So, it, yeah, Mortician was already on Relapse. And I, I mean, I might have just like contacted. Uh, time to kind of let them let them know but you know after seeing the show i guess they were kind of sold on it. at least for, that's what I, what I remember it was a long freaking time ago yeah check this out john i got something here that i pulled up and uh just for this too and this is short so we could play it again check it out watching will play because he'd just be like yeah you know? yeah and it was just it was like i remember <laughs> even i'd have to like i'd have to like look back at like sit here and be like when do we go because i couldn't tell what the hell he was playing it sounded brutal as fuck though you know and he would just be like go and we just do it you know <laughs> it's so brutal dude it's like the bass is like <laughs> and then the drums are <laughs> I'm fucking so brutal dude yeah, it was, it was the crowd <laughs> being in the crowd at that show. I mean, I had seen Mortician before, but I was surrounded by a lot of people who had never seen Mortician. So <laughs> being in the crowd was like a whole people were fucking shitting a brick, dude. Literally, as <laughs> soon as they heard fun. that bass sound and the fucking blasts, they were like you said in a weird way that helped probably solidify something for Mortician. I don't know in some yeah. certain kind of way. Well, Mortician already had a little bit of a buzz from what I remember back at that time in um, in the Buffalo area, but it was just, you know, it just, that kind of really, yeah, stepped it up kind of for Mortician and stuff, and it was fun. I mean, I, I had a lot of great fun memories of 
playing with mortician it was, it was a great experience it, it's just great to play something that was something i really didn't have a lot of involvement writing at that time i was doing just a lot for every band that i was in i always did like just insane amount of work for i just get all involved in it but with mortician it was just like just chill back and just you know every you know i mean i came up with a couple riffs here and there but they were also stripped down that i really can't even really say that they were riffs that i came up with when they were done with but it was just a good thing to like totally go in my opposite of direction what i was doing you know and it actually it expanded me more as a songwriter because you know i've learned that you know you just could write some simple stuff and still you know it could still be i mean of course it'd be yeah. brutal but effective yeah come across the proper way because i mean um you know i just remember i remember i mean the mortician stuff just it's so funny because the stuff I thought was very basic when I went to mortician practice was like technical, you know, and I was like, okay, I got to bring it down more, more, it was like strip everything down to the bare bones, you know, but that was the beauty of it, you know? And like, dude, you got four riffs, two, <laughs> two riffs. That's it. Two riffs, yeah. one bass break. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> Songs but, over. <laughs> yeah, but that's you know that's that's a good it's a good thing to have the that kind of experience. You want you know you want to be able to look at things in another way because, like I said, I I kind of felt that on my end that I was getting more technical, especially towards the end of the revenant time, and it, it was cool and I was I was all for it. But it was just you know after doing that, I mean I was already going into more heavier stuff with incantation but then once it more tissue was just like bringing it to the most primal it could be you know and that's yeah. a great thing so sick dude I yeah know. it was a lot of fun i and you know someone said it right here those blasts kill me every time you're right dude i mean that's yeah. kind of how exactly how i feel too man i mean sitcher was i mean he wasn't I, he definitely wasn't the best drummer in the world but he was so effective at just being pissed off and I, you know i'm a big fan of like old punk and hardcore you just want to hear that pissed offness to the to the drum playing it isn't always about the um you know technical ability and is it effective in the band i thought i thought uh Sutra was you know great in the band you know it's, oh, dude so, it's so a, fucking brutal such man. a uh, bummer that he's passed it's a sad thing yeah yeah it is man he was a good guy you know he's funny as fuck dude i never yeah. saw the guy without a smile on his face basically he was just always such a happy dude you know yeah i have a lot of well, there's a lot of fun times hanging out with those guys i mean it was insane times for sure you know but uh it, it was a lot of fun I you're with will so i mean when you're with will you're already <laughs> expecting a little bit of insane times you know yeah but it, it, it's great great memories for sure i I'm, I just feel fortunate, you know, that I've got an opportunity to play with one of the, um, you know, one of the most important bands in that style of, you know, just heavy, I don't know, it's kind of heavy death metal grind. I don't know what it's, what it's considered, but, you know, it's made, it, it made its impact and I'm a little piece in it, you know, but Roger does an amazing job now. I mean, they, they yeah. sound, I mean, for me, their zombie apocalypse is like the heaviest fucking thing I ever heard on earth when I hear that deer, dun, 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 deer. it's just like, holy yeah. crap, dude. That's yeah. Just he like took it to a whole, you know? he took a fucking whole <laughs> other fucking level, dude, you know? Yeah. And he, I, I've talked yeah. to him about the mortician riffing and all that stuff too. And, uh, basically kind of what you said too. It's just like, he tells me, you know, I put this part and I'm messing with this. He goes, and it just starts to get a little too technical. So I just take like just the first two little parts <laughs> off it, and then I turn that into the whole song, dude. And he's yeah. like, "Yeah," and that's fucking like this song. And I'm like, "What?" You know? Yeah. And the good thing, I mean, they needed someone like Roger in the band anyway, because I was just kind of like a spacer in the band between Matt Sitcher and um, Matt Harshner. Uh, Harsh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Matt Harsh yeah. and um, Roger. You know, I mean, yeah, I, I tried to help out a little bit here and there, but it was more like I would just be jamming with, uh, you know, sit here just at practice or whatever. We'll just hear something you thought was cool and just say like, 
yeah, let's let's use that, you know? Yeah, let me ask you a question, John, just because we're in that little era, too. Because I interviewed uh, Matt Harshner. I did an interview with him just for shits and giggles because I'm like, dude, you know, you were around the blessed master, basically. You were around the most brutal horror fucking gangster, Will, and then you were around friggin' Matt Sitcher. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, just asking him questions about like you know the recordings or what was going on, and he said that uh, back when they recorded like the rehearsal demo and stuff, they recorded it in Matt Sitcher's basement or whatever. Is that where you used to do your thing with Mortician? Yeah, we, I practiced. I think yeah, almost every time we practiced it in there and in Matt's basement, unless it was we went to TKO Studios a couple times over in. Um, like Rochester, New York, hmm. a couple times a jam. I think actually we we jammed out there. We did like a, a double jam with Ink and Mortician for when um, was it Sharon and uh, Terry came out from uh, Dracada. Just I guess they were they're hanging out or whatever. We kind of did the double jam there. Hmm. Cool. Yeah, I was curious about that after Matt after uh, Matt Harshner mentioned it. I was like, eh, I gotta ask John about that actually too. You know. Yeah, I haven't spoken to Harsher for a long time. I've barely ever seen him around. He pops up on me because we have kind of like a mutual, like I might be related to him. So <laughs> I, he said, it's possible, you know? So huh, okay, he cool. said, he, he's like, hey, cousin now. So I'm like, yeah, all right. If we're cousins, we're cousins, yo. <laughs> <laughs> King, if you were lost, Matt Harshner was the uh, rehearsal demo guitarist from Mortician. So that's who we're talking about. Right along. Yeah, he was a cool dude. He's a he's a he's a really bugged out dude, actually. Yeah, I went to some crazy ass parties with Matt uh, Harshner. Oh, really, Sitcher Harsh, all, all those Spring Valley dudes. I mean, har- I mean, old old school King Folly type parties up in uh, Spring Valley. Way old. Yeah, it was. They they were <laughs> hardcore parties. There was no joke. No joke. A lot of chemicals. Parties. A lot yeah, of a lot of, yeah, you could you could smell you could smell the plastic burning all over those you know plastic a spearmint. <laughs> <laughs> it's spearmint mixed with diesel fuels. So that's usually the smell. I know yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, he he was he yeah. We're gonna probably do something else too. So I did like an interview with him too because I was like, yeah, you know what? He's my cousin. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, <laughs> I gotta have him on, bro. He's a good guy. You know, he's a bugged out dude. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, yeah. so yeah, going back to the day of death, though. Mm-hmm. So you know, I was playing a few clips when you weren't on. Um, you know, we were looking at some stuff, also letting people know about this, which is coming up. Yeah, they're gonna do a tribute for Brian Patterson in uh, New York in Brooklyn. Uh, Ed Farshley is putting this on. Yes, yeah, massacre, no. deceased, embalmer, uh, anthropic, uh, anarchists, and then uh, I think the lineup changed actually from this one <coughs> with some other one here. Okay, I didn't get the updated flyer, but I'm definitely going to the. Yeah, this is. Uh... Oh no, maybe it's the same bands, but yeah, this is the other one. So, yeah, I mean, any memories about uh, Brian? Because, I mean, I know you seem like... Well, I mean... There's a lot to say, obviously, from both of you guys. I'm sure, uh, you know, King spoke on it a little bit. Yeah, well, I mean, I've known... um, Yeah, I mean, I've known Brian for probably... Since I've known anybody in freaking uh, the Buffalo area, you know? So, um, yeah, I mean... you know, he's just been one of those people is very um, sincere. He was, you know, he was, I, I just, I really like the fact that he just wasn't trendy or nothing like that. You know, and he, he just, he just was very honest about, he didn't let, you know, drama. He didn't let any bullshit get in the way of, him supporting the bands that he liked and that he was into. And he was just always there to help out, um, you know, in one way or another. I mean, you know, obviously, I mean, I, I personally, I owe a great debt to him for, you know, what he did, you know, with my ex Jill, 
um, you know, when she had her heart attack and stuff, he helped out just, um, you know. Yeah, without... he helped me too when when my daughter Bridget uh, had like like we had this thing in Rhode Island and uh, yeah. it was kind of like a benefit, but it wasn't really announced like that. And then he sent a care package of stuff to uh, for us to like you know rally off or whatever, which was really cool, man. You know, yeah, I, mean, I mean, I never um... the guy was a really heartfelt dude that as far as like helping other people a lot, you know, like yeah. with with nothing to gain for himself. You know what I mean? Just going out of his way for others, which you know, you, I love people like that, man. It's like so cool. You know, it's well, sad to know that he's gone, obviously, yeah. but you know, it's people like us that have to let other people know about cool people like him or just carry his name on, you know? So yeah. I'm glad that deceased is having a show in his name. You know, it's cool. Yeah. Well, it's, a, it's, it's one of those, um, you know, there's, a lot of people in the scene that you know helped out a lot and are important parts but they don't get as much uh, attention just because you know playing a band when you play in a band it's obviously it's easier to get attention of people but you know the people like him you know you know he you know doing the glorious times book do you know just all the things promoting shows you know he's promoting shows in buffalo of bands that you know he's basically into or he wants to help out he's not yeah. booking shows in buffalo with bands that he knows he's going to make a lot of money on you know he's not he's doing it because he loves doing it loves helping out supporting people i mean that's that's you know if more the real people, way of the scene dude you know what more, i mean if, the if real metal people, way yeah, if more people followed his example, we have a way better uh, underground scene, you know. I agree. So he's, he's definitely a, um, you know, I, it, yeah, it definitely hit me hard when he passed. Um, I mean, it, it, it always sucks. It sucks being at this age when a lot of, you know, people you know or your friends pass away, you know. But, you know, with him, it was just, it felt extra, extra bad because he's like, always the one giving to other people you know and yeah. it's like it's like it's uh i felt like yeah we didn't get to give to him dude because like things happen so fucking fast dude i was like whoa you know just yeah like, okay. it, was, it, was, it was it was it was just really strange because i i mean i was in contact with him only days before you know i heard about what happened i i, I mean he didn't even bring up anything about him him and so, king too right king weren't you mentioning you were talking to the, him like the day he went to the hospital it was facebook my damn raffles like i was telling him he he won a creator cd and he came to me and he's like yeah man i want to get this creator cd let me pay you for it blah 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 and then his brother posted that he had covid and he was in the hospital with pneumonia and blood clots in his lungs i said dude are you in the fucking hospital and he was like <laughs> yeah and I was like, stuff <laughs> And I was like, dude, I don't want your fucking money. You keep your fucking money. And he was just like, no, no, no. And I was like, dude, not taking it. Get better. And I said, how bad are you? And he said, the pain is, you know, it's a 10, a 10 out of 10. And the next day I said, how are you doing? And he never responded. And that was it. And then he was, he was dead. It was literally, yeah. I mean, I still got my fucking, yeah, I'm never going to get rid of my, uh, it's just a private messenger on Facebook. It was that yeah. day. And then his brother got in touch. And he was just telling me, I was like, man, fuck. It's terrible, yeah, it, man. I mean, yeah. I mean, I don't. I that that shows you just how fucking crazy the world is. I mean, I've had some awful stuff with my mother and my my son's mother. Like you know, quickly they went down like the same way. But I mean, it was literally overnight. I mean, it was literally overnight. I mean, that's the truth. If you look at it, if I, you know, John, you know what went on, and so do you, I guess, Roy too. They they oh, it just yeah. was like he was he was there. He was on a Friday. He was there, and then he wasn't there, man. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I have no you idea know, if, if he was feeling bad or anything. He never came across like there was any problem. It was just, I was just talking to him like normal. And then all, you know, it was just. I think that's know, was he was like that to everybody at that moment, too. Yeah. But I, I think it's just the way. I mean, some people, some Brian people deal is. with it that way. Yeah. 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 He's yeah. right. Yeah. Brian Definitely. was a sweetheart it, and a pillar of the underground. That's right. True metal warrior. True. It's crazy because um, yeah, the real deal, Sam. He was the real deal. Yeah, he didn't want um, you know he wanted to help other people out and do things, but he was he was like yeah, when it came to him maybe needing something or, or whatnot, he was like kind of shy about it himself. You know, I think yeah, I noticed that about and, like, him. He didn't like he, and he didn't want like you know maybe he was 
already feeling bad or maybe he knew he had COVID when he was contacting me, but he didn't want to contact me with like a sob story, you know, like a lot of people, you know, they, they want sympathy in that situation for something like that. But he seemed like he was, you know, he just wanted everything to be cool. Maybe he was being optimistic about it. I don't know. Cause I, like I said, all I had was a normal conversation with him. Like, you know, and that was it. It wasn't like, um, yeah, you know, it's sad. It happened yeah, fast. Yeah. I, I think I, I must have been a, a day or two afterwards. Uh, I, I mean, I'm slow on replying. I mean, if I, yeah, if I hadn't brought it up. Yeah, if I hadn't brought it up on Facebook asking him after I saw his brother's post, he wouldn't have said nothing to me either. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, but, it's pretty wild. But yeah, I'm def definitely going to that that sh uh, show, you know, his um, memorial show or whatever, or his tribute show, I guess, or whatever. It's, I, def I already have everything planned out for the show. I've been in touch with uh, Ed Farsi about that already. Yeah, I was trying to bring Ed on tonight. He just uh Absolutely. Yeah, definitely everybody support that show, man. These people are busting their ass on this, too. man. Yeah. yeah, and Brian was a good guy, bro. So, you know. Mm -hmm. it, he lives on through us, you know what I mean? And like the day of death alone is just one of his things. And then you got the Glorious Times book. You know what I mean? You have the legacy of all the cool shows that he did. The, the second day of death things he did, you know, just just being a super duper scene supporter. And the grind of we Anthropic. Were, Don't forget it, the grind of Anthropic. Yeah, yeah, we were talking about. Yeah, we were talking about them too earlier, John. A little that I was, me and King were both saying we were so fucking happy that he got to go and do that and get out there and, and play everything too. Which you know, because yeah. later in life, when you're in your 40s, there's a good chance you're probably not going to start a band, you know. <laughs> but he did, <laughs> and which I thought was awesome yeah. at the time, and I was I was like kind of proud in a way and happy. And then I yeah. saw that he was hitting the road, and I was like, yeah, all right, he's he's, you know what I'm saying? He's yeah, no, the band was it was starting to get some legs to it too, you know. I mean, he's just he's one of those hard working underground people. So I mean, you know, yeah. Um, most people knew about his band and stuff, you know, as, as soon as he was doing it, you know, just between all his friends and stuff. And, um, yeah, it was, it was, yeah, it was, it was like, I was trying to talk, uh, with the, the other guy from, uh, the, the other dude on the zine. So you had like, uh, uh, this, um, you know, you had Brian zine, which was a chainsaw yeah. and then you had a mosh, uh, central or whatever. So earlier today, I talked to the dude from Mosh Central, too, because I was curious to see if I could get them on and ask questions about, like, just out of curiosity, like, who like who was the one that called these bands or who booked you? Or And I even asked King before we got on. I was like, yo, who booked, who booked you just out of curiosity? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I told you it was, it was Josh from Suffocation. Talk, talk to Mark, and he said that Brian Patterson wanted us to play. That's how we. That's how it was with us. I don't. Joe, the Joe Pristash. I'm sure I remember him if I see him. Yeah. Name doesn't ring a bell so much, but if I saw him, oh yeah, that guy. You know, kind of thing. But that that was it for yeah. us. Because I didn't even, you know, for many, many, many years, I've been with the guy doing all the stuff for the band. But back then, Mark, Mark uh, Adams, a guitar player, he was doing a lot of booking too, and they just got his phone number. We probably had our little card or some bullshit. And they just in Josh from Suffocation, and we were doing shows for Suffocation back then. He just said, "Hey, this guy wants you guys to play." And Mark called, and we just went. Yeah, it's so cool, man. <laughs> just the way the show came together—that's what so you do, uh, right, John? That's what you do. You just get up. No, and go. John. John storms the stage with his band and plays anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, we're fucking I mean, playing. Especially, I mean, especially at the, at that point, you know, we were just, we were just happy to any show we can get. We didn't care. We just wanted to play. We, you know, it's like. You know, it wasn't about, you know, making enough money to get to the show and back. Who cares? You just want to go and play the show because that's what you do. You have a band, you want to play shows, you know? We were back. I remember, John, uh, I went on a road trip with you only three weeks later, and we were back at the Sky Room again. And then Rob yeah. Trevor played and um, Immortal, Immortal Terror and Mortician, which was a really cool show, dude, you know? I remember Immortal Terror uh, being like really like good, you know. We were all like, "Whoa, who's this band, dude? How come they yeah. didn't play?" You know. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was, I, yeah, I remember that too. That was um, 
Yeah. It was in November of uh that was, that it was, was like, part of the la- one of the last it was like shows three you weeks with Will. later. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think that was gotcha. one of the last shows you played with Will. That was the last show that you played guitar for Mortician yeah. with Will? No. Well, yeah. I think that was the last one I played with Mortician and the last one he sang for us. Mm. You know? oh, okay. I think, yeah, yeah. I think it was both because we had one other show booked at Faces after that, and Will didn't show up. So we just had uh, uh, Craig just joined the band. And we just yeah. told, well, we, you, pl- you sang in uh, Future Fact. You're the only one that's ever sang live. So just try to do something, you know? Yeah, yeah. He looked at us like we were crazy, but it was, it was the best decision I think he may ever made in the band was to step up to that, you know. Yeah, and there was the other no show, Will show before that with uh where you had Ross singing and all that stuff. You guys were just yeah, talking about like, it the G- other day. G- Will, yeah, yeah. So I, at that point I realized that maybe, you know, Will is just getting stretched, you know, maybe yeah. he's just too busy with both bands. And I, I, I totally understood. It wasn't a, a big deal. I was just like, okay, fine, we're just you know, yeah. it was fun while it lasted, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. Sometimes how it goes, you know? And also, like, say you and King, you guys both have, like, kind of switched, you guys switched a little bit of, uh like, roles a little bit. Like, you started singing, John, you know, and playing guitar. And King, you, like, kind of put the drums back and kind of just became the singer, right? Yeah, I just jumped out front, boy. It's a good thing it happened in a little bit older years, boy. I could imagine those younger years being out front and all that crazy shit. <laughs> in the Miss I mean, Pac-Man, you, you, in the Miss Pac-Man days. Listen, you but, worked. Uh, no, yeah, you, actually, you work up front, I, yeah, as far man. as that goes. You I work. That. Yeah. Yeah, you work up front. I like being up. Yeah, I mean, you know, back then my butt, my butt cheeks were glued to a drum stool. I was stuck there, man. I was like, I want to get up run around. I want to get up run around. You know, now I can. Yeah, yeah, it's one of those things. I, John I knows. Really want... John just saw the October thirty one attack a couple months yeah, ago. Yeah, it was killer. Yeah, yeah, it was over <laughs> Raleigh. Yeah, but um, yeah, I mean, I you know, yeah, I just wanted to always just play guitar in the band. I never even thought about being the vocalist. You know, it wasn't until I realized after a certain amount of time, you know, it's like you can't keep trying to find people and then expecting them to do it the way you want to do it. It's like, you know it's to the point where it's like, well, if you want it done a certain way, why don't you do it yourself? I'm just like, Hmm, I guess, I guess it's right. I mean, I, you know, I didn't realize how impractical it was that somebody else wouldn't want to do things exactly the way I think that it's great. But, you know, I finally came to that conclusion (laughs) that it's better if I just do it and then I don't have to worry about complaining to anybody for not doing it the way I want to. It sounds retarded, but you know, it's, you know, I had a, I had a vision and I wanted a certain way, you know, and it just... probably put a newfound respect for you on veg, right? <laughs> <laughs> Cause you're like, damn, he was singing and playing back then too. You know, like yeah. I was just over here playing the guitar. Yeah, here, you know? I know. Well, yeah. Play, trust me, playing some of those songs live that I was just playing guitar on, I had to switch to vocal. Really difficult. You know, I mean, some of the, some of the patterns that, you know, like the early, some of the early stuff, like, um, you know, Trapment of Evil or something like that. I mean, there's a lot of fucking words in that song to be playing and, and moving a lot with the guitar neck or it, especially even a lot of stuff that Daniel Crochado did on uh, Diabolical Conquest. It's like, holy fuck, how do these patterns match up with the guitar? It doesn't. It took a while. But, mm. but anyway, you know, it's... um, It's interesting. The bottom line is, is yeah, you know, sometimes you got to just step up to the plate you know hell yeah john does a great yeah thanks alex thanks for stopping in brother we were all giving love to your baby when you left what's up dan ferguson how's it going brother underground (laughs) you're here too so this is the underground man yeah we know dan for a long time too yeah it's so cool man so i don't know if i have anything else to play from this super show I was saying cool. earlier that uh, it's so bugged out that uh, you know I got this to play maybe a little, and I, they they this was so early at the time that like I hadn't even heard this band. So let's check this out. I gotta take a whiz anyway. <laughs>
I'm only playing this for the music half too. This is like the quality is insane. Rough shit, huh? <laughs> that was Cannibal Corpse, though. There I like really the, much... the sci-fi video footage. Yeah, yeah. It was just for the audio only, basically. Because there isn't really too much footage of them playing. Probably because the guys that were up there. I don't know if that was John's footage, though. Maybe. You yeah, know? dude, my, maybe... my phone is my phone is bopping and stopping here. If it cuts out, dude, yeah, I'll my man. tell you guys I had a blast. I don't know yeah, it stays dude. on for another couple minutes, but it's definitely red. And it's doing some weird, like, chirp i've never heard before i've never had my phone's never gone this far down i guess it's, <laughs> i've charged it all the way and i guess it's a, what we've been on three and a half hours yeah, yeah. i guess it's about a four hour battery <laughs> so yeah so yeah we could say our outro for king no, i just want to make sure everybody i just want to say cheers to everybody and fuck i had a blast with everybody oh, on yeah, night. great seeing everybody and Thanks roy you did a fantastic job man you're a death cool, metal bro. underground you're a death you're a, definitely a fucking a wizard of the underground my friend Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. I mean, and if you want to do it, you know, if you want to sit down and yap sometime, like you were saying, anytime, brother, just let me know. Yeah, me I, I've got this down to a science. My phone works for um for a camera for you to see me, and I use a tablet for me to see you because my my fucking phone won't do a flip. I can't if I look at my phone, you and I have to see you, all you'll see is like my 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 table. See what I'm saying? Yeah, I can yeah. see you now. But you can't. But now I see you see for me as a table. <laughs> so I got to flip it this way to get it. But it, it's not been a problem. I'm, I'm enjoying these. Man. I've been doing a bunch of podcasts lately and I, I enjoy it. And, you know, this yeah. thing tonight talking about Brian and this this legendary festival, man, I mean, 31 man, man. years ago tonight. It's, it's fucking it's wild taking it all in my mind and all the things that have happened in 31 years and just. But the band is still going, man. We're still, I mean, we're, we're I know. 36 years in now. I mean, that was a, that was a big break for us. You know, it was a big thing. It was our second festival and um, we were just getting out and meeting all our buddies, especially me. I was the pen pal guy with everybody and to meet everybody from the bands that, you know, like all Topsy and, you know, and, and people like Luke LeMay and Gore Guts and just yeah. people I knew, you know, from, you know, around the country that flew in from out of the country. A lot of those people are Hell still yeah. dear friends to this day. We just talked to a bunch of them, both of us, you know. We're and all still also, doing our thing. Yeah, we're all still doing our thing. Everyone still friends. Um, also, that uh, I I was thinking about that lineup. Like almost all those bands are still around too. <laughs> wow, <Wild, laughs> right? Kind of cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool, man. You know, almost almost. But yeah, every, everybody that watched or chatted or anything, dude, thumbs up to yeah the legions and legionettes, too. man. We're fucking wishing everybody well in this fucking crazy world. And uh, thank you, brother. Thank you very much. Fraser said you rule before you leave. All right, King. We'll let you go, though. We love you, Fraser. I'll see you in Texas. Roy, keep touching me, buddy. If you want to do a show, well, I'm ready for you, man. Anytime. We'll do it, brother. We'll be. It'll be a deceased okay. show, you know, or some old. Uh, maybe we'll talk about your old. We'll do it up. I'd love to. That's all. That's always fun. You... All right, my brother. Anything. I know you know details, and I always like that. It's always fun because you. You go past the the normal questions, you know, and that's that's fine. That's what I like. Yeah, I'm like that for some weird reason. Well, yeah, I mean, you're, you know, you you you've been there the whole time. It's not like you're you're asking a lot of interviews. I'm one of, I'm one of the older guys in the scene. A lot of people ask like, what was it like back then? Because they're 20 years younger than me, 
And I'm asking them, like, yeah, I know when you get to 50 and you see what it feels like to be 50 when they're like 28 and 30, you know? Yeah. And fucking yeah. out there, like, how was it 25 years ago? It's as good as your fucking back is now. Wait till you get in your 50s, you know? Just keep on carrying the load. <laughs> the fucking underground yeah. forever, man. Fucking real deal. I feel like sometimes fuck, saying fuck, to them, fuck the posers. You know? Sometimes I feel like saying to somebody like, "Well, how was it back then?" I, I say, "Well, stick around and you'll see too." <laughs> and if not, then, see ya. Hey, <laughs> to be, to, yeah, A B C ya. But thanks again, yeah. man. Thanks to everybody fucking out there, man. All the All best, right, thanks, to you, Roy. King. Keep touch and cheers to you. Thank You're you, buddy. God in the underground, brother. Take it easy. Man. All that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there you have it. We had King Fowley. Like I said, a god in the underground. So this is really cool uh, that we got to do this uh, Day of Death uh, death metal podcast. My camera looking a little crazy right now. Let me see what I didn't uh, bring to the table. Might have a, a video or two more. Um, I think we did the repulsion, autopsy, couple autopsy, deceased incantation and mortician repulsion lucifer's hammer there's uh there's barely any uh footage of like suffocation there's barely any footage of um a couple of the bands that played here uh i did see which i thought was pretty freaking cool this photo out and about oh hold on a sec i don't know why that didn't share that um, yeah, let me grab it over here. Uh, I got it over here. This was a photo, I believe, taken at the Day of Death also, which was uh, a photo of Disharmonic Orchestra. Um, the guy's rocking his atrocity uh, shirt there. He looks like he's uh, he peeled the stickers off John McEntee's guitar and was like f the third or fourth band to use it. But uh, yeah, I think this is from the Day of Death. Uh, I was having trouble reading the German uh, translation, but we have uh, we did have some photos of suffocation from the Day of Death, and that was the original suffocation, like the demo lineup and the Human Waste lineup, where you got Frank there and um, uh, Josh Barron who later did join Autopsy. And I see Terrence Hobbs there. Uh, we don't see the drummer, Mike uh, Smith. But um, they were cool guys, man. I mean, they were always around my scene. Um, yeah, Frank Mullen still had long hair in 1990. That's right. Yeah, he totally bugged out for a good uh, band, too. Like, they, I feel like they, got, they also got a lot of traction after this... Uh, fest which was cool man because it was deserved you know they were always really down to earth and uh brutal dudes you know so let's see what else i didn't show you freaks um let's see i might have showed this this is a photo of repulsion um this some of these might have been in uh the book with the glorious times because uh it um there was like a glorious times like page or whatever, but it was like kind of nuked by a virus or whatever. So, you know, I, I am assuming Brian put it together and that compilation where it had the live repulsion and the deceased and everything. So he, they had a few photos up there. So here's a really cool one of uh, repulsion as a three piece. So you got Scott Carlson there and then, uh, you can't see Dave Grave in the picture, but I know he is there. So what else we got here? Um, this was a photo I didn't get to show. Uh, this was a uh, old, um, I guess it was like the festival shirt design or whatever, which um, is pretty bugged out and cool. So it was an old... Uh, I'm not sure who did the art on this. It kind of looks familiar, though. If anybody knows in the chat, let me know. So here's an old uh, A Day of Death shirt from back in the day. 
I'm sure super duper collectible nowadays. Um, any shirt collectors out there? I don't know if you have this. Uh, I don't think I saw this at the at the gig, or it was sold out by the time I try to buy shirts. I have um, what do you call it? I have a photo of something I copped from the day of death, which was a piece of merch. Um, I like I said, I I didn't see this shirt at the day of death, but I copped this piece of merch because they had them new. And I was just going around supporting each table and each band. So it was this hat right here, <laughs> which is uh, a suffocation hat. Um, I had this in my collection for quite a few years. Uh, if you look at the live photo of the band, the guy is wearing the same hat, you know? So they had just gotten these at that time. And uh, I was into the suffocation demo. I can't say I rolled through everything suffocation down the line but the suffocation demo and the human waste and uh the early live shows were they were cool man they were fucking brutal dude so yeah let's see what else um i think i had live immolation but i don't know where that went or maybe i played the split bootleg Mex mexican bootleg so here's a kind of rare photo. Um, this is a, uh, I think this came from Disposable Underground. So I want to give them credit. And this is a photo of uh, McEntee in the back there playing with Mortician. He uh, and Will up front with the bass. See, he's got all his uh, stickers on there, Immolation and Unleashed and stuff totally fucking destructive uh photo you can't really see matt sitcher but i mean who could ever really see a photo of a, a drummer you know i see a crate amp on the floor back there behind john's leg and i see uh john's signature uh tie the uh hat to your belt buckle while you headbang thing going on which is so brutal and cool um I had that hat and it blew off my head and disappeared to Galveston. Yep, there you go. I don't know if you're talking about the suffocation one or the incantation one that's attached to John's leg, but cool. What's up, Andy, too? Thanks for tuning in. Um, I'm not going to go 28, 28 hours on tonight, but uh, I figured it'd be nice to go back and talk about the day of death since today was the 30th, uh, 31st year anniversary. You know, I felt like uh, I reached out to a few key dudes that were pretty, you know, into into the, uh, you know, just having, we had a good time at this show, so it was cool. Um, it was cool to have King on here. He always is a good storyteller and a freak. Um, not a freak in a bad way, but a freak in a good way. So what else we got here? I had, I don't know if I showed this one. No, I showed that. That's Suffo. We showed the Craig Pillard. Okay, I had this photo, which um, I don't know if I popped this on or not, but this was uh, this was Will singing for Incantation. Uh, he, you know, obviously he didn't play bass for Incantation, so when they played after Gorophobia, he he. He put his bass down, you know, and, uh, or, you know, they played separate times, I believe. They might have played pretty close to each other. And then, uh, so it's kind of rare to see Will Romer with, uh, no bass, you know, like you don't really see that much. If the show goes 31 years, we'll go back to, yeah, exactly. We'll go back in time. And then, uh, that's my old friend Ronnie Dio in the back. Um, spelled maybe different than Dio Dio. He was, uh, he was the bass player of Incantation on the uh, first album and on the demo stuff. Um, yeah, cool dude rocking that old school God flesh air. All my friends from Phlegm that are in the chat and a lot of people, we all know Ronnie, good dude. He was a freak. Um, you know, kind of a wall in the underground now. He's not really 
all about it, about it, you know. But yeah, I'm glad everybody could tune in um, to check this out. Uh, actually, I don't think I showed this one to. Maybe I did. I don't know. No, I showed that one. We didn't show this one. Um, this is also from Disposable Underground, which is a really dope, dope photo of Scott uh, Carlson from uh, Repulsion. I'm not really sure what that shirt is, but that's pretty glamorous, bro. Super young, obviously. I mean, we were all younger dudes. Um, not that he's old now. He's aged well. He's a, he's a good-looking man. Um, Repulsion were the two bands that, uh, you know, were the, probably the most important ones we thought when we went to this fest, you know, it was like Repulsion and then like Autopsy was everybody felt like they were there for it, you know, um, they, uh, with, um, for me though, you know, I had a connection to Gorophobia, Mortician, Incantation, Deceased from seeing them at G. Willikers over the years. So for me, it was, like I said uh, earlier, it was kind of like a, you know, damn, like all my friends' bands are getting out there and they get to play with Autopsy. How cool is that? You know what I'm saying? I was very happy and uh, I was having a good time, man. It was a good fest. So, yeah, I'm going to wrap this up. Um, I appreciate anyone that, uh, you know, tuned in or chatted. Uh, yeah, we brought back some old memories. Camera looks fuzzy as all F. Um, not sure what the deal is here. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the show. Um, I appreciate everybody that's in the chat. I see a lot of my friends, Boris. And uh, thanks, Andy. I appreciate it, brother. Tom, Tony, Tori, sorry. And and uh, um, Sam, I appreciate it, brother. Everybody. I appreciate anyone else that's not in the chats or whatever that may be tuned in on either YouTube, Twitch, uh, my death metal site uh, page, or my Facebook page, like if you're one of my like Facebook friends or whatever. And if you are one of my Facebook friends, you should um, you should subscribe to my channel. Uh, I don't have the subscribe button here because I don't usually always do big plugs. But uh, here is the channel. You know, maybe let your friends know. Real simple. YouTube.com Death Metal Podcast. So you could subscribe there. I've been going live almost twice a week right now. So I, at the minimum, I'll probably do like one live a week. And, uh, you know, if I feel like it, I'll do two. Today was the day of death. So basically I figured why not tribute the day of death? Uh, I pulled it together, you know, in the last day or two. And uh, everything here, I just just go off the, you know, wing. I don't, I don't script it or make notes or ask you know, have to, not that it's wrong to write down some questions. Cause I, I think in moving into this, I thought I was going to do that, you know, but, uh, I just asked the questions that, you know, I have on my mind. So I appreciate everybody. Thank you, Carl, Andy, my brother, Francisco, you're the man. Good night, Andy. <laughs> Thanks for doing this. Educate the noobs. Yep. This is where it came from. Yep. Happy anniversary, day of death. So, yeah, I appreciate everybody, bro. Um, it's like hanging out, man, you know? Cheers, Laura. Um, it's like hanging out with your friends, right? But, you know, we're talking some death metal. You play a few videos, like be playing a friggin' old record player or some tapes or whatever. We're putting on an obscene uh, VHS at Jim Fleet's house or something. So this is kind of the same without the obscene uh, fleet video. So I appreciate everybody for checking out Death Metal Podcast. Uh, like I said, if you got a friend or somebody you want to share this with, I appreciate I appreciate everybody, bro. Um, you know, I'm a big fan of nostalgic stuff like the Day of Death. So, you know, I do want to share the memory with people that might have not been there or... 
you know, um, you know, maybe they knew something about the show or just saw the flyer, you know, like on some flyer page on Facebook or something. But, you know, I think we kind of brought out kind of more of what was going on through sight and sound tonight. And, uh, you know, it wasn't the 30th anniversary, but who gives a crap, right? <laughs> this is how it goes. So I appreciate everybody. And then uh, I'll check you out, man. Let's see if I got some music to go out with. And then uh, then we out. I really, I, I mean, I don't know how many times I could play this mortician, but let's check, check this out. Let's check this out.